For most people, 1963 was a long time ago. A bulletin from CBS News, President Kennedy has been shot by a would-be assassin in Dallas, Texas. For the New York Giants, 23 years between division championships has seemed like a lifetime. Somehow, the two teams do not seem to be that different. From Y.A. Tittle to Phil Simms, and the trademark defense has endured the passing of time. In the words of Lawrence Taylor, we believe in fate. We seem predestined to do something great. There are sighs of relief in New York today. The Giants are once again champions and host the St. Louis Cardinals. Good afternoon, everyone. Sunny and cold in New York. The St. Louis Cardinals and the Giants in a sellout crowd at Giants Stadium. There are the standings, and there's no catching them now. The Redskins lost yesterday. The Giants clinched it. And now they'll be battling for the home field advantage. I'm Jack Buck, and Joe Theismann and I certainly congratulate the Giants. They're a terrific football team, a quality team. And they deserve to win, but let me be the bad guy. Some people are already talking about Pasadena and the Super Bowl. It's a little early, Joe. Well, if you check your watch, it is a little bit early. There's two games left in the season. The Giants want to win this football game today for those two reasons. Number one, they want to prove that they earned it, not, necess not necessarily that it was given to them. Secondly, they have to win these last two games to secure a home field advantage through the playoffs. Very important to the team going to a Super Bowl possibly. It really is. Will McDonough on the pregame show talked about some coaching changes here and there in the NFL. In St. Louis, though they've won only three games, they're happy with their coach. And these Cardinals can be very tough. They can be very tough, and they've come very close in the last few ball games. They gave Washington a real tough game. They played to a 10-10 tie last week against Philadelphia. They played these Giants very tough the last time out. They may be a down football team, but they're not out, and they're on their way to being a very good ball club. The Giants have won the toss. They'll receive temperature 27. It's a good thing the sun is shining. And we have a bit of a wind, and we'll talk about the effects of that wind here at Giants Stadium as Eric Schubert, the former Giant, kicks it off to McConkey or Solomon Miller. A line drive kick, and McConkey watches it go into the end zone. It wasn't touched. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, and we'll go from there. Bill Sims, the quarterback, they gave him a rousing ovation when he came in today onto the field. They used to boo the heck out of him. They give him another hand now as he starts his offense. Here's the defense to be up against. Bob Clasby, David Galloway, now Baker up front. Linebackers for the Cardinals. Freddie Jonan and Charlie Baker on the outside. E.J. Jr. and Nico Noga inside. Lionel Washington is starting in left corner. And Cedric Mack on the other. Along with Leonard Smith and Lonnie Young. And Carthon goes in motion. Receiver Stacy Robinson. They certainly knew what they wanted to do on the first play, and it's a big first down out to the 38 yard line. Here's the remainder of the giant offense besides Sims and Robinson. We have Joe Morris, Maurice Carthon, Bobby Johnson, and Stacy Robinson are the wide receivers. The offensive line they're so proud of Brad Benson, Billy Ard, Bart Oates, Chris Godfrey, Carl Nelson, and Mark Bavaro. That was a 19 yard game. Conkey is in on first down from the 39. Morris running left. And a big gain. I said these Cardinals, the ball came loose. The ball came loose, but the Giants got it back, and that's a big gain by Joe Morris. What are they going to try to do against the Cardinals, Joe? Well, I think the Giants want to try and establish their running game. Their passing game has carried, to the, carried them to their last two victories, but they feel like with the weather the way it is, the type of stadium and the area they play in here in, in New York, they want to be able to establish that running game knowing that the weather may not favor the passing game as the season progresses on into the playoffs. The ball is out to the 44, and it is second down and four. Oh, 
Barth on. And he plows out to midfield for a first down. A tackle made by Lana Young. And what do the Cardinals have to do to stop this New York running game? Well, I think the Cardinals are going to have to commit their linebackers to try and blitz. You know, you blitz for two reasons. To put pressure on the quarterback and to stop the running game. It's going to be important that their corners play well and their linebackers get up to stop the running game. I don't believe they can do it with the front three they have. Two first downs for the Giants, and McConkey is back in there. Dropped it at second and ten, and the crowd groaned. Well, that's the type of a pass that a quarterback wants to just take and hand to the receiver. Joe Morris is wide open. You'll see him going down the left side of your screen, right there in the corner. He'll start down the field. Now the safety bites over. Sims just tries to give it to him, just lay it where he can get to it, and let him a little bit too far inside. There we saw one of the weaknesses of the Cardinals. Their linebackers do not drop back well into pass coverage. No, they're more run-type linebackers than they are pass-type cover people. So, yeah, it does present a problem. Second down and ten. Bobby Johnson in motion, and Morris is smothered on the blitz. That's what you talked about, Joe, blitzing to stop the run. Well, they're going to have to. I just don't feel like that the three people up front with Galloway, Baker, and Clasby, that they have the ability to go in and just stop the running game of the Giants. It's going to require Freddie Joe Nunn blitzing and Charles, and Charles Baker from the outside. They'll have to try and funnel Morris back into the help that he has from the inside linebackers and the defensive linemen. So a drop pass, a loss of five, and it's third down and 16. Have completed 36% of their third down plays. Dennis Thurman, Wayne Smith are in for the Cardinals defensively. Four man rush. Staying in the pocket, it's incomplete. Very good coverage by Lionel Washington. He got in front of Bobby Johnson, and it's time for the Giants to punt. The number one punter in the NFC and the number two kicker in the National Football League is Sean Lindetta. And he is kicking with the wind here in the first quarter. And there's a rookie back here for the Cardinals inside the 15 by Sikahema who might make the Pro Bowl. It's like kicking a rock. Sikahema lets it bounce. Nice tackle at about this 17 yard line. And we have played two and a half minutes. The first, the tackle downfield was made by Robbie Jones. The defensive line of the Giants, a three-man front, George Martin, the rookie Eric Howard, and Leonard Marshall, and the terrific linebackers, Carl Banks, Gary Reasons, Harry Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. They have a change at the left corner with Elvis Patterson regaining his old spot. Perry Williams on the other corner. And Kenny Hill and Herb Welch are the safety men with Terry Kennard out of the lineup and there is number 56 and there is Neil Lomax and he is running against a very very tough defense particularly on the ground from their own 17 for the Cardinals Mitchell is in the lineup along with Earl Farrell and Marsh is on a wing he's the tight end and he's in motion and a toss to Farrell he was shut down by the Eagles last week and taken down by Lawrence Taylor. You'll see with all the movement uh, in the pre-lineup for the Cardinals, what they want to do is you see the tight end Marsh going in motion. They don't want Lawrence Taylor on the weak side. They feel like the best way to attack the Giant defense is to put somebody on Lawrence Taylor and not let him run around and catch people, but to go right at him because they just feel like if there's any weakness in him, that might be it. So look for them to run outside behind the tight end's blocks. Pick up a four. Pepper Johnson is in at the linebacker spot for the Giants. Stump Mitchell trying to cut it back, and he gets only a couple. It'll be third down. Here's the rest of the offense for the Cardinals. Lomax has been hot lately. He has Stump Mitchell and Earl Farrell in the backfield. Roy Green and J.T. Smith, the wide receivers, and a patchwork offensive line. Louise Sharp's the only one who's played all the way. Ray Brown, a rookie. Gene Shilton, a rookie. Lance Smith back at the guard. Tootie Robbins and Doug Marsh, the tight end. Third down and 
three. We played almost four minutes. That was Carl Banks who got in for the sack. He has six and a half this year. And for the Giants, their 50th sack of the year, and it's time for the Cardinals to punt. Well, you see, they have them backed up. Now what they want to do is they're bringing both those linebackers from the right side, and you just don't have enough people to block everybody. Banks gets in and makes the tackle on Lomack. Now, he was sacked seven times the last time the Cardinals and Giants played, and it's a tough way to start to put your team in a hole like that. And Greg Cater will be punting with Phil McConkie. The Giants should have the ball in very good shape. But not too good a kick into the wind, and they let it bounce, and a bad bounce. And look where the Giants are. They're at the Cardinal. 37 yard line. We played a little bit more than four minutes. There's no score, and the ball's at the Cardinal 37. Could have won seven in a row, but it hasn't been easy. It certainly hasn't. You know, they've beaten the Redskins by seven. You see the Cowboys by three. And if you look down the line, they've not really been blown out of a game. They haven't really dominated anybody either. So this is the type of football team that is building character as they continue to win. It was only a 23-yard punt. And the ball's at the Cardinal 37. The blitz is on. Morris slips and goes down and gets up and gains a few more yards. That was a clever little run by Joe Morris. And there are scores of other games. Morris got five. Cleveland trying to clinch it. Leads at Cincinnati 7-0 first quarter. And New England at home leads the 49ers 7 to nothing. And New England could assure themselves of at least a wild card with a victory. And the Eagles are playing tough at Dallas in the first quarter. No score. And Atlanta's still hanging on on their scoreless in the first quarter. It's a second down and a long five for New York. That noise out there, isn't it? He just did beat the 30-second clock. And it's batted down by Al Baker, and it's incomplete. That time, the St. Louis Cardinals started to blitz. You heard Phil Simms say, red 78, which was an audible. Then he changed it back, and he said, no, stay with it. It was that movement in the secondary by the entire Cardinal defense. There you see him. Now he'll go back. They've run everybody down the field in straight lines. Morris outside, McConkey down the middle. He just doesn't know where to go with the football. Excellent play by Al Baker to take away Carthon on the dump route pass. So it's still a long five, and it's third down. Dennis Thurman and Wayne Smith check in for the Cardinals, who are without Kyle Carter today in their defensive backfield. The blitz is on, a full-fledged blitz, and they nail it. Racing up with Lonnie Young, the safety man, number 43. And one thing I admire about the Cardinals, Joe, and they blitz a lot, they go for the tackle. They don't try to knock anybody's head off. They go for the hit. You're right. They're smart blitzers. They don't want to go in and just take somebody and hurt them. They want to just take them down and make sure they stop the play. Right from the right of your screen, there you see Leonard Young just take off. Now he gets a hold of Sims. He's not going to let him escape and make a completion. Worst thing you can have happen is have the right blitz on, have the quarterback get away, and try and let your guys cover people down the field one-on-one. -on -one. Lentena is punting again, and... He gets another dandy off. Fair catch by Sikama is called for. One thing I'm trying to figure out here, Joe, the Giants got the opening kickoff, and they're operating with the wind here in the first quarter. How did that happen? Well, what happens is they just, the wind is not that bad. If you look at this stadium, the flags are blowing one way, but the flags on the goalpost, which tells you what's going on on the field, are basically still. So the decision for the wind is not that great a factor, and that's why I'm sure the Giants said, hey, look, we'll take the football. That's a very misleading picture because that's at the top of the stadium. And that's down on the field. The ball's at the 14-yard line. Cardinals get it for the second time. Well, Green went in motion across to Mitchell. He got a block by Farrell, and a big hit was made by... Taylor, a two-yard game, man, that guy's unbelievable. Well, the thing is, you just cannot run away from Lawrence Taylor. I played in a ball game with him. I beat him on a bootleg. I went around him five yards later. Somebody hit me so hard from the back. Who was it? It was Lawrence Taylor, the same guy I'd run around. Roy Green's going to have to make the cutoff on Taylor, or else they're not just going to be able to run outside or inside. That's really his strength. He's a pursued type of linebacker, a pursuer and a pass 
rusher. But Gary Reason's out. We have Pepper Johnson in there. Second down and eight. Sharp probably is the one who drew the flag. You know the way they line up, Joe? 57 offense. They call it Still against Sharp. Out. Bob McAway is the referee. The way they line up, I don't know whether Lawrence Taylor is a linebacker or a defensive end. No, he's a linebacker. You can tell that because he wears number 56. Okay. That's the way, easiest way to tell. But he's treated like a, a defensive lineman. Of course, he's got 19 and a half sacks. Marshall has 11. So between the two of them, you're looking at oh, over 30 sacks just from that right side of the defense. Of course, Louis Sharp's going to try and get up and get a little bit of an advantage. Now we have Andy Hedden in there for the Giants defensively. 35 left in the first quarter, second and long. That is not a safety. It's at the one yard line. The second sack, Harry Carson got it. I bet Lomax wishes now he had thrown it away in that one instant where he had the chance to do so. He lost 10 yards. This is the second time this afternoon that Lomax has held on to the ball. There you see Marshall up to now. Now throw it away. Get rid of it. Get rid of it somewhere. No matter how good the coverage is downfield, you see everybody's running. Marsh is being covered. Green's being covered. You still got to throw it in the direction of where your guy is and make sure you just don't take that big sack. This is how the Giants have been winning their games in the same fashion. It's third and 23. Got to get out to the court. And a home run ball, and Troy Johnson couldn't get there. I don't know if Lomax could have taken any more time, but now the Giants are going to get good field position once again. Elvis Patterson was covering Troy Johnson. That's a long run from that end zone, I want to tell you, coming to the bench. And that, you know, you've got nowhere to go. You're sort of in a box. Now, this becomes very tricky. Here comes Hedden. Lomax does the, the best thing he could do is take a shot deep and just get rid of the football. Now, the Cardinals need a good snap from center to get the ball to Greg Cater. Phil McConkey is deep. Are they going to come after it? They should go after it. They look like it. Pretty fair kick, but no coverage downfield. And McConkey dives to the 25-yard line. And the Giants are going to get another scoring opportunity. They'll have the ball for the third time. We've played seven minutes. Seven fifty one remaining in the quarter. The Giants in possession for the third time. And one of these times they're going to get something done. They really pursued Morris and if Bubba Baker was the first one on his back. Look at that gang tackling by the Cardinals. Joe and a little scuffle breaks out and there goes a flag. This is not going to be a passive engagement. No, it, ha it never has been a passive engagement. These two teams have built up sort of a dislike for one another as the season and as the games have gone on because the Cardinals have played the Giants so tough. One of the heavyweights was Mark Bavaro, who was punching it out with Charlie Baker, the linebacker. Is there going to be a penalty? I think it's going to be offsetting. Unnecessary roughness, 89 offense, 52 defense, offsetting foul, the down pass. Charlie Baker fought to a draw and the down <laughs> counts and it's second down and about eight. Since 1963, although the Giants have the overall edge, it has been dead even and the Cardinals have hurt the Giants along the way and vice versa. Second down. Blitz is on again is caught and the tackle is made immediately with that blitzing on Lonnie Young had one on one coverage on Mark Bavaro and he didn't miss him did he no and that time Phil Sims did the right thing he read the blitz and got rid of the football to the man who's made 59 catches that's his 60th catch this year there you'll see the secondary the linebackers come up the middle 
And there goes Leonard Smith trying to fill the hole. That's just a nice throw. Phil Sims has really matured in the area of standing in and picking out blitzes. He defies people to come after him. Now. Bill Parcells talking about Lonnie Young called him underrated yesterday. He's the Cardinal free safety. It's third down. Along four. Galbraith is in the lineup. Tony's out on a wing. Catches the ball. He's taken down for a big loss on the play, and Nico Nogo is on his ankle. The St. Louis Cardinals have got the Giants, and particularly Phil Simms, confused. That's the type of a pass you will run when you think they're going to be in man-to-man -man coverage so the linebackers can pick one another. There's a they flag were in down a zone. and a holding call against the Cardinals. They were in a zone coverage at that time. They had the right defense to stop the play. But again, the mistakes that have continually hurt. Defense and holding, middle linebacker, five yards. It's a first down. This is so typical of what has happened to this 3 10 and 1 Cardinal team. I don't know whether they were talking about Noga or Junior, but one of them was caught for holding, and it's a first down at the 15. <laughs> You stop somebody from getting a first down, your defense does a great job, and then they make a mistake in the secondary to hurt the ball club. It's been the classic example that's happened to the Cardinals all year. Bobby Johnson, Stacy Robinson, the wide receivers. Cross to Morris. He blasts the ball through there, and what a big run that was. Oh, he's strong for a little guy. Charlie Baker, Nico Noga, made the tackle and good blocking up front. Well, if you're going to have, there you see right in the middle of your screen, if you're going to have a good running game, you need a good blocking tight end. Now watch Bavaro get locked up. You see him, he just positions the linebacker right out. Freddie Joe Nunn is just being ridden. And now with Joe Morris's quickness, who runs exceptionally well on AstroTurf, he cuts back up inside. And Godfrey handled EJ Jr. Second down and two at the seven. That's a first and goal. Joe Morris tackled by Leonard Smith. Morris is a little package, as we all know, at 5'7", but he weighs 195, and he's gained more than 1,200 yards. Well, you know, he, never, he missed training camp this year. He didn't really perform that well in the beginning of the year, and as, as usually happens, you get a little bit hurt. He's now starting get, to get into that groove. He had 181 yards against the Redskins, and he, he just continues to improve as the weeks go on. Very durable for a little guy. This is what the punt exchange and the penalty has brought about. It's first and goal at the three. Oh, I went in motion. Pass it, patted down, and almost intercepted by the linebacker, Freddie Joe Nunn. There's a play action pass attended, uh, intended for Mark Bavaro. If you talk to the Cardinals secondary people, they say that Sims is going to look for Bavaro first. They first run a little play before, anybody, before else. anybody else. You see Carthon out in the flat. You see Freddie Joe Nunn just staying right next to Bavaro now. That's not Freddie's strong point is catching the ball, but that time he knocks it down, prevents the touchdown on the pass. Leo Roussan is into the backfield at the tailback spot. Second and goal for the three. Roussan's going to throw it. He's going to run it. And he is out of bounds before he got to the goal line. Roussan, the second-year man out of Colorado, is a big back at 222 pounds, and Freddie Joe Nunn and E.J. Jr. took care of him. Well, that would have been the first pass he would have been thrown. Would have thrown. They tried a little pitch sweep. The eye formation tells the Cardinals that it's basically a run formation. Now, what happens in good football teams like the Giants, they know that you're scouting them that way, and so they run the try and run the pass. That time, the Cardinals drop back and covered it well. If they can stop the Giants from scoring here, it'll be a big shot in the arm for the Cardinals. You're talking about a touchdown, right? Um, yes. It's third and goal from the two, and Joe Morris, who has 10 rushing touchdowns. line of the Giants and Chris Godfrey the right guard number 61 cleared the path Joe Morris scores his 11th touchdown running this year his 12th overall has 1,222 yards had coming into this ball game and is the man that the Giants will build their running attack on. Wasn't that penalty murder for the Cardinals? It's happened every time. You make a big mistake and somebody else capitalizes on it. It's like missing an extra point. Raul Allegre is perfect on extra points this year. They stopped the play. 439 left in the first quarter. 
You can tell from the pace of this one, they're going to mix it. Encroachment, defense, foul will be assessed on the kickoff. The referee has ears like I do. <laughs> I'm wearing a headset. You're wearing a headset. <laughs> my, my doesn't stick out like that. That's Bob McAway, who's a good friend, by the way. Oh, so. <laughs> well, till now, he has been. Allegra trying to make it 7 0. It's good. Well, on their third possession, the Giants move it on in with Morris blasting over behind Godfrey. There you see Godfrey kick out E.J. Jr. Evokes a quarterback's most dreaded nightmare. The Packers meet Lawrence Taylor and the Giants next Saturday on CBS Sports. Seven plays, 25 yards, helped out by a penalty. The Giants went in. Kept the ball for three minutes and 12 seconds. Joe Morris, a two-yard run. And the kickoff by Sean Lindetta, or excuse me, by Raul Allegri. And the deep men are by Sikahema and Eric Swanson. They're both good return men. Line drive kick. Pretty good bounce to Sikahema. He's out to the 25-yard line. December 15th, 1963. Let's look back as the Giants won the division. The Yankee Stadium, Ali Sherman was the head coach, and Y.A. Tittle was the quarterback, and Del Schaffner got loose on this one. In New York, they still talk about this catch by Frank Gifford. A one-handed grab that set up a winning score. And Joel Morrison got the winning touchdown pass. Now the Cardinals are at their 25. Marsh in motion. Farrell to the left. And a good block by Marsh on Lawrence Taylor. And we have a gain by Farrell of six yards. Look at Cleveland trying to nail it down, leading at Cincinnati 7-3. San Francisco has tied New England in the first quarter. With a flag on that last play. Defense. Okay, five-yard face mask foul, and that might give the Cardinals a first down. Randy Marsh did a very good job of hooking Lawrence Taylor. Well, Doug Marsh comes across, like I mentioned before, if you're going to run against the Giants and you want to try and be halfway effective, you've got to run at Lawrence Taylor because he's such a great pursuer. First down at the St. Louis 35. Roy Green in motion and a pass out here to J.T. Smith. Good block by Green and a five-yard gain. And the tackle made by Harry Carson. Very good rhythm on that play by the Cardinals. That's right. I think that's what they have to do. You know, run a little bit, throw a little quick stuff. You know, you can't stand back against the Giants and hope to try and move the football. You come up third down and 17, third down and 23, you're almost better off punting and just sitting back there. They're doing the right thing now. They're mixing it up a little bit on first and 10. There's Gene Stalling, second and five. to Mitchell. He only got a couple as he ran into Carson again. That's why they're so darn tough against the run. They've averaged giving up 77.2 rushing yards per game. Number one in the NFL. Nobody runs against the Giants, and that's Bill Parcells' philosophy. He said, I want, I want to be able to run the football, and I don't want to allow people to run the football against us. That is the way we're going to build our football team. From the Cardinal 42, third and three. 50 left in the first quarter. 7 0 Giants. Well, that's the third sack of Neil Lomax. Crawling in there was Pepper Johnson, the rookie linebacker. Right in the middle of your screen, you're going to see Pepper Johnson. He doesn't buy the fake to Farrell. He just runs right around Farrell. Nice move, goes down low on Lomax, and he's got to pull the ball down. Tipped 
to throw and they're hanging on your ankles. Oh, like you just can't you can't step anywhere. Neal did the right thing. Again, it was a third down sack. Forced him to punt. Cater has punted for 23 yards and 29 yards. Rocky waiting. This is a little bit better. The Giants got it back. McConkey fell on his own fumble. He has a bad right hand and a bandaged right hand. And the Giants get the ball for the fourth time. That was a 32 yard punt. The Green Bay Packers come to the Big Apple next Saturday. Final week of the regular season. It starts at 12 o'clock with the NFL today. And the game will still be meaningful as the Giants fire for the home field advantage. Important here today. It will be important next Saturday. Robinson goes to the right. O.J. Anderson is in the lineup. And he gets quite a few against his former mates. O.J. had a lot of fun here visiting with his teammates at the hotel over the weekend. He said it's going to be strange running against them. And Leonard Smith and the others said it's going to be strange tackling him. He said, we used to play brother-in-law during training camp. We never really hurt each other. They're not playing brother-in-law out there this afternoon, I'll tell you that. They may, they may not try and really hurt one another, but I guarantee they want to pop one another. It is second down and four. Try it again. He slips a bit and is short of a first down. Across town, and let's pay the toll across the bridge and visit with Brent. All right, the toll is accepted, Mr. Buck, and here's an update on the Niners and the Patriots. Now, Joe Cribb scored from three yards out, but New England came back and kicked a field goal, and the Patriots lead the 49ers 10-7, first quarter, back to Jack and Joe. That's a fight for survival over there with New England leading the 49ers. It's third down and one here. And O.J. Anderson stays in the lineup with a good blocker. Carthon, third and a long one yard. And O.J. did not get it. It's fourth down. He was met by David Galloway. And the ball came loose. And a flag is down. That flag came in from way out in the middle of nowhere. Everybody's going to wait to see what happens. This will be a surprise. Christmas surprise. Christmas surprise, right. Holding against St. Louis. Boy, murder, isn't it? Every time they do something good, they do something bad. That's the second time on third down that they've stopped the Giants, and the second time that a penalty has allowed them to continue Illegal their drive. Illegal use of the hands. Number 52 defense. Hands to the face. Hands Five to the face against down. Charlie Baker. Orleans leading Atlanta. Green Bay and Tampa Bay are scoreless. Buffalo ahead at Indianapolis. You know, in all honesty, if a guy doesn't do it intentionally, and I mean, you know, you you got a tight end coming off the ball from below you. If you bring your hands up to try and block him and, and ward him off, it's going to be hard not to hit him somewhere around the head. I mean, I got to be a little realistic. Forty seconds left in the first quarter. Rusan is in. First down pass. Home run ball. Robinson can't get it. He was being covered on the corner by Cedric Mack. Sims is a good long ball thrower, Joe. That's his strength, I think, the long ball. There you see Robinson looking back. Now, Cedric Mack does the right thing. He heads for an angle to cut him off and looks back for the ball. If he hadn't looked back... It would have been interference. It would have been interference. That's a rule that they put in that says if the receiver and the defender are both looking back for the ball, there can be incidental contact. As you see, there was incidental contact. 32 seconds left, first quarter, 7-0 Giants. Sims two out of seven, and he's been sacked a couple of times. He might be sacked here. The blitz is on, and the pass is dropped by Bavaro with Lonnie Young on the coverage. The Cardinals are forcing the issue on defense. They're putting pressure on Sims, making him throw the ball quickly, and making tough catches. much for this crowd to react to anything. I've played a lot of games in this stadium, and one of the toughest places to be is on a visiting bench because the fans behind you are very close, and they're very loud. Tony Galbraith comes in on third down. Third and ten from midfield. Three wide receivers. McConkey in motion. The blitz is on again. They pick it up. Long ball again. Back there covering on Stacy Robinson and the Giants will punt. The 
Cardinal secondary and the Cardinal defense is continuing to confuse Phil Sims. And, the, and as well as the wide receivers. When he, the guy's supposed to run an up, he runs a post. When he's supposed to run zone stuff, they run man-to-man -man stuff. They are really confusing the giant offense. They can't seem to figure out the Cardinal defense. Sean, Sean Landetta is punting again. This is his third. He's kicked for 45 and 37. Sickaham awaits. Oates with the snap. Pretty good kick. Let it go by. Inside the five by the Giants. Downfield was Thomas Johnson to down the ball. Neil Lomax has been hot in his last few games. Six touchdowns, two interceptions. He had been benched earlier in favor of Cliff Stout. That's right. He's come back. You know, he said standing on the sidelines gave him a chance to look at the game a little bit differently. He wasn't out long enough to get too much of a change of perspective. But the thing is, he managed to heal a lot of the small injuries that were bothering him in the early part of the year. He's got bad tootsies. Terrible, bad. ugly feet. Ugly ten, feet. Ten seconds left in the first quarter. Well, they have sacked Lomax three times already. Drops it off short to Farrell, who's a good pass receiver for a fullback, and that'll mark the end of the first quarter. And a flag is down back upfield. Holding St. Louis. Well, there they were. The Cardinals were going to go back. They kept both their backs in. They were going to try and go for one. That's the best place to do it. Holding for 58. There's a new kicker on the Cardinal half team. The Gene Stallings. Still first down. He is upset. It's, it's been that kind of a year for Gene Stallings. It's, I mean, it's driving him crazy. It really is. I mean, it, it's not the kind of thing you can coach either. What happens out in between those white lines is what's up to do with the players. The coach can only get them ready. Well, a holding call as the Cardinals back at their two and a half yard line. When we start the second quarter, it's seven nothing Giants. Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Subaru and the Subaru XT, the Sport Magazine Super Bowl MVP award. And by Minolta, creator of the incredible Maxim Autofocus SLR system, only from the mind of Minolta. And a look at the big town, and we're at Giant Stadium. Vasty crowd, 76,000. Temperature is in the high 20s. Joe Morris with the only score of the game, two yards, and the Cardinals have been sacked three times, and they're minus seven total offense. Joe Theismann alongside. I'm Jack Buck, and it's second down. It's first down, 12 and a half. Joe's shaking his head here. I just, you know, as I look, I've been in that situation where you're backed up in your own end zone and you're staring at those 11 faces that really don't like you at all. <laughs> I mean, and the thing is, is you want to get it to somebody and at least give them a chance. That time, the Giants dropped back into a zone and just said, throw it to somebody short and we'll knock the heck at them. And they did. Gary Reasons did just that. That was a score yesterday, and that clinched it for the Giants. Denver 31 to 30 over the Redskins at Denver. Second, 11. It off short to Mitchell, and he did not get the first down. J.T. Smith was clearing out, and it is third down coming up, and Harry Carson made that tackle, and the Cardinals are being killed in the punting game and field position. You know, we've had our conversations with Gene Stallings the last couple weeks, not just in this ball game, and he talks about field possession being very important. The Cardinals have had four possessions. They've started an average on their own 49. The Giants, four possessions, an average on their own 49. Or excuse me, back, backed up that far. It's, it, you, can't, you can't expect the team to go 80 yards every time they get the football. And they better complete this third down pass. Pepper Johnson with the fourth sack of Lomax. 
you see Neil Lomax get up. It looks like he might have been dinged just a little bit. Pepper Johnson comes right up the middle. Ray Brown just doesn't block anybody. Runs right by him. I mean, it's hard enough to throw when people are in the way of people, but if nobody blocks anybody, it's very difficult to operate. And what usually follows a sack is a punt. Here's another by Cater. Kicking with the wind, it's a little better, and McConkey takes it from his 48. And runs out of bounds, shy of the 40. 13-15 left in the half, 7-0 Giants. Across the way is Bill Parcells. He, his wife Judy, have three kids. He tells me I'm a plain old New Jersey kid. He yeah. said I like to fish and hang around diners and rent a, rent yeah. a room in a boarding house. You know what he loves to go fish, though, Chip? Sharks. Yeah, he goes after Mako. I mean, he's not just a guy who goes out and fishes for guppies or anything. The man goes out after big-time sharks. That tells you the nature of the and man. He's after the big-time Super Bowl. He said I want to do it one time just to prove that I can do it. To the first down at the Cardinal 41. Anderson is in there with Carthon. Look at the time. He overthrew everybody. Bill Parcells, the last couple of weeks, has seen his team defeat Washington. They fell way behind the 49ers and came back and won that. People talk about those being very important wins, but he talks about the 11th game of the year when they were trailing against Minnesota at the Metrodome, and they had fourth down and long. Fourth and 17, and look what happened. This was at Minnesota earlier this year. Marcel says this was the most important play of the season. Now we're back to live action, and Carthon is tagged tackled by Clasby and he got some help and it'll be third down. You know the St. Louis Cardinal defense has played very very well this first half. The thing that they have done is they've kept the Giants out of the end zone on their previous four, four possessions. Joe going back to that Minnesota game it's tough to complete a pass on fourth and 17. Oh it sure is and when you you know and that led that gave them the opportunity to go on and win that football game. The Giants are a team that has never quit and what's scary is they're real young. All over they're real young. They're down and eight here. Tony Galbraith in the lineup. Keeping his hands warm in his jacket. Goals to get away from the pressure and incomplete. It went through the hands of Bobby Johnson, who, by the way, is from St. Louis. He went to Kansas. And it's fourth down, and this Cardinal defense is holding fourth, unless the penalties get him again. That's right. That's the first time, I think, in, in the last three drives that a penalty hasn't helped the Giants get a first down. There you saw Lonnie Young walking over to congratulate Bobby Johnson for missing that one. Yeah, like, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Once again, the Cardinals might be pinned back in their territory. Sick of him awaiting for this punt. From no pressure. He just pushes the ball. To go and it's into the end zone. What a bad break for the giant punter. And it bounced the other way, it would have gone out on the one yard line. 12 10 left in the half, 7 0 Giants. Nice day in New York. The Cardinals go from their 20. We see the Giants have clinched, the Bears have clinched, the Rams lead the West, but they haven't clinched it yet. And the rest of the contenders. Washington will be a wild card home team. 49ers, Minnesota, Dallas still alive, and Atlanta hanging on. It'll take an incredible combination to get them in. First down. Lomax. Green in motion. Hard to turn the corner and run against the Giants, and Perry Williams up from the corner. Ran him out. What is that motion doing to the Giants, if anything, Joe? Well, the motion's not doing anything to the Giants. What they're trying to do with the motion, either with Roy Green or with Doug Marsh, is put somebody in front of Lawrence Taylor so that he cannot pursue freely and run the ball carrier down from behind. Cardinal tight end Marsh, number 80, at whom you're looking, has caught only 21 passes this year. Three in the last six football games. Look at Cleveland widening their lead 14 to 3 and New England hanging on by three in the second quarter. Second and seven here. And he threw 
behind and high to Roy Green. Green Green wanted to anchor there in the middle. Over here in New York, more so than in St. Louis and other cities, there's talk about Roy Green and the possibility that he'll be traded at the end of the year, but I hadn't heard anything about I that. I hadn't either, and I would find it very unlikely. He's one of their most valuable offensive players. He's been hurt a lot this year, and there's been a lot said about making assessments of his injury, but still, he's the type of a player, been to a lot of Pro Bowls, you have to have him on your ball club. Phil Sims asked me if he was going to be traded, that is, if Green was going to be traded. I asked Roy about it. He said he didn't know anything about it. Troy Johnson, the third wide receiver. Greg Lasker is in there defensively for the Giants. Look at it. Somebody broke loose. And Lomax got a first down before he went out of bounds. He can run when he wants to. Or when he has to. Or when he has to. And that time he had to. So another first down for the Cardinals, and that is their second of the day. First four times the Cardinals had the ball today. Look what happened. Punt, 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 punt. Now they get a first down. They have the ball at their 31. Who said you can't run against the Giants? <laughs> Lomax just ran for That's the right. The only problem is, is if, it, if it's the quarterback running, you're in trouble. tackle was made by Elvis Patterson. Patterson has reclaimed the job on the corner, number 34. The rookie Mark Collins had been there. We have an injured player. That was a six-yard gain. Patterson, who made the hit, is down, so we'll get Mark Collins, the rookie, back in there. Mark Collins playing with a bad hand. He broke a bunch of bones in his hand, and he's still got a cast on it, but uh, you know, Parcells didn't necessarily want to play Collins, wants to give him a chance to uh, another week of rest, heal a little bit. Here's something that happens to you. We'll watch the end of the play. You're in the playoffs, and in the Giants' case, they've clinched the division. And then you get players injured, and uh, you wonder when you're going to get them back. Well, there you see Stump Mitchell straight arm, and, and you see Patterson's head hit the ground. Now, it could be a matter of his fingers sort of getting right up underneath that face mask and going in. He jogged off the field, so hopefully it's nothing serious. And Collins comes in, even though he has a broken hand. Number 25, he's a rookie from Cal State Fullerton. And that was a six-yard gain by Mitchell on the pass play. You know, as a quarterback, when you see a defensive secondary man come in, you want to try and work on it. couldn't plow out of the and it's third down now in place of Terry Kennard who's had a knee operation Herb Welch out of UCLA is playing the free safety spot you know and he is a good football player but the thing about the, the Giants is all their secondary people are good Welch is in his second year Williams in his third but he's not a Terry Kennard. Terry Kennard keys the quarterback and controls all that secondary movement. So they lose a little bit there when it comes to control of the defense. Good news for the Giants. Elvis Patterson is back in there. Third down and a long run. And a first down run by Earl Farrell. Boy, it's nice to see the fullback in that classic style put the ball away with both hands. And he's a good fullback. You know, he, he, he likes to run. He likes to catch the football. Of course, the Cardinals like to run him on the football, but uh, he's the kind of guy who just loves to be involved in the game, whether it's blocking for Stump Mitchell or carrying the ball up the middle. He realizes that he's going to have to continue to pound and pound and pound. Out to the 47, there's Patterson, who returned very quickly. Ten and a half left in the half, 7 nothing Giants. Let's tune in on Neil Lomax. have it for a further gain to the 32. Heads up play by J.T. Smith. He recovered the fumble by Roy Green. Here it is, a quick set. Lomax going to set one, two, three, and fire. Green right there makes a nice catch. Now he says, oh, geez, I'm open. Head down the field. Ball comes out. There's J.T. Smith right on top of it. Great hustle. The Cardinals just have not gotten enough breaks like that for That's right. Uh, two weeks ago, the ball would have been recovered by the Giants. Maybe the Cardinals' luck is changing. 
And they move the sideline marker and the official calls a timeout with 954 remaining in the half. That was a 16 yard pickup with a pass, fumble and recovery. Kenny Hill going off. So we do have a, an official timeout on the field. Premier teams, the Fighting Illini of Illinois, take on the North Carolina Tar Heels next Saturday on CBS Sports. We're at the Meadowlands in New Jersey, and we have 9.48 left in the half. That's the way Joe Theismann talks. He's I, from Jersey. That's right. I'm from Jersey, not Jersey. <laughs> I'm uh, just down the road a little bit in South River. There's another New Jerseyite. The head coach, Bill Parcells. I think I mentioned his wife's name is Judy. They have three daughters. He's happy about winning the division, but he's not happy about the way this game is going. First down for the Cardinals at the Giant 32. Big draw. Good catch by Farrell. It's another first down to the 20. That Farrell can really help you out. And Lomax uh, did a little dancing and that helped him well he's shaking, he's shaking his head there saying my goodness what's going on that time he did an excellent job avoiding the rush you'll see lawrence taylor putting the pressure on he fakes the feral now from the right side of your screen there's taylor again lomax does a fine job feral makes a nice catch get up field get the first down and on that play greg lasker had been in there for kenny hill and now hill is back in there at the strong safety spot for new york first down at the 19. Pretty good drive by the Cardinals. Screen pass over the middle to Farrell. And he got about four or five yards on that one before Carl Banks tackled him. A six-yard game. Let's check some scores of other games. Dallas has to win to stay alive. McFadden two field goals for the Eagles. Green Bay and Tampa Bay slugging it out. No score. Cleveland trying to nail down their division. Winning 14 to three at Cincinnati in the second quarter. Buffalo ahead seven nothing in Indianapolis. New Orleans trying to eliminate Atlanta. Second down and five. Mitchell. I was looking for a stump to cut it back a little more quickly. Elvis Patterson tackled him. And it'll be third down. He lost three. Patterson can force the run on the corner. Right just down the bottom of your screen, you'll see the toss by Lomax outside to Mitchell. Now he comes up and forces everything back into him, stays on his feet, continues to hold that corner. You just can't let that running back circle the, the, off, the defense on you to try and get upfield. Did an excellent job making that play. Ball's at the New York 17. Three wide receivers for the Cardinals. Troy Johnson to the right. Greg Lasker is the fifth defensive back. It's third to seven. Airs it out, and Johnson is out of bounds. One thing Johnson did, he pushed off, and that allowed him to get loose, but he caught the ball and stepped out of bounds with Patterson covering. Incidental contact. He pushed off, Bill. Well, it's incidental contact. When both of them are going for the ball, that time he gets the one foot down and the other one just comes in out of bounds. You see right at the right of your screen. There you go. See that left foot's going to come down. Right. There's one in. Left's out. Got to have both of them in in this game. Right's in and left is out. It the is. Troy Johnson is somebody the Cardinals are very high on. He has the best speed of all their wide receivers. He's had 14 catches so far. He's really developing. This will be Mike Ruther snapping, Austin holding, Kent Austin, and Eric Schubert, the former Giant kicker. He was a big hero here at one time. Trying to the field goal. official. The incompletion is confirmed. Play stand. Incomplete fourth down, and this is going to be a field goal try of 35 yards by Schubert. I talked to Schubert about coming back to Giant Stadium. He says, they booed me when I was a Giant. I would expect them to boo me when I'm a Cardinal. Well, they'd love to make him put the Cardinals on the board. He thumped it pretty well, and it is no good. No good. So now Schubert is 8 out of 14. 
like to buy Christmas presents for all these people. <laughs> these are the kickers these two teams have had in the last two years. O'Donohue, Atkinson, Boyovic, Lee, and Schubert. Some of the names are repeats. Ajishik, Atkinson, Schubert, and Cooper, and Thomas, and now the Giants have solved their problem with Allegri. And they're at their 20. With Morris, Cedric Mack could catch him. And he is taken down inside the 30. Lionel Washington ran him down, but they marked the ball at the Cardinal 26, and the fans love it, a 54-yard run. Well, there you see, it's the old Green Bay sweep, for lack of a better description. They string out that defense and let a little Joe Morris cut up inside. Talking to the Giant players the other day, they said he runs so much better on AstroTurf than he does on grass. Bobby Johnson, the wide receiver, made a good block for him. Down to the 26-yard line. Turning upfield is Roussan, and he goes five yards. While we have an opportunity, how's that 49er game coming along, Brent Musburger? Well, Jack, the Niners have gone ahead. Roger Craig, who's having a big day, goes in. But the Niners botched up the snap on the extra point. It fails. They're up by three. That'll come back to Hanum. Let's go back to Jack. Yeah, those missed kicks really hurt. You know, the Giants took over on the 20 after the miss by Schubert. Morris got the big run. Spins and drives. First down to the 15, and the ball came loose. But it's whistled dead at the 15. We want to go back and have another look at that run of 54 by Joe Morris. There's Bart Oates right in the middle of your screen. Phil Sims going to take the snap. Now watch what he does to Galloway. Just takes him and buries him. Hard. And there goes Joe. Whoosh. Just hear the wind go by as it cuts up. Morris Express, and now a couple of runs by Roussan and Carthon. They're down to the 16 first down. Morris again. And he ran into Nico Noga. And Noga finished him off, and they start punching there. Here goes the flag. Big Al Baker is in it. Somebody, let's see if they're. It's against St. Louis. Personal foul against St. Louis. I don't think so much. I, I don't think so much it was the takedown by Noga as much as the subsequent activity. Well, I think it actually started before that. Brad Benson's blocking on Al Baker. And he just didn't like the way he was handled when he came up. As soon as the pileup was over, he just put a hand in his face. You, know, if you, you just can't do it out in front of the referees and for the whole world Personal to see. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. 60 defense, half the distance, automatic first down. That's one of those penalties that just, just hurts you. There you see, he'll throw the fist right in the face. The officials see that, and he throws another one trying to get through. You know, you just can't punch a guy. you got to try and poke him in the eye, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but they do it anyway. At the seven, first and goal. Morris got about four before Lonnie Young came up and tackled him. 4.20 left in the half, clock running. Bill Parcells watching his team trying to go out in front 14 to nothing. Maurice Carthon on that play cut down Leonard Smith, which allowed Joe Morris to turn the, turn the corner. Now, this is the one thing the Cardinals did not want the Giants to do, and that's run outside. this Joe because his running game has not been that good 
on a consistent basis. No, it hasn't. You're right. And uh, going against the, the Cardinal Ball Club, which is ranked 24th in the National Football League against the rush, he felt like it was a good day to try and get his running game back. As I mentioned, he's going to need it in this kind of climate. Well, let's see if Allegre has been affected or infected by all of this bad kicking that's been going on. Rutledge holding. score in the first quarter. They have one here in the second quarter. 14 nothing. Right in the circle and right behind the goal post is Chris Godfrey who's going to make a key block for Joe Morris on this touchdown run. Right on EJ Jr. Just kicks him out. Little Joe scoots in. We've talked about Godfrey uh, frequently today. Last week it was Benson who was the big hero and there's Godfrey. Here's the kick to second him from the seven. Slips down at about the 21 yard line. Three and a half left in the half. 14 nothing Giants. Next Saturday, special edition of the NFL today, followed by the Green Bay Packers coming here to the Meadowlands to meet Taylor and Sims and Godfrey and the other Giants, the champions of the NFC East. And after that, collegiate basketball. Illinois number six against North Carolina number five. It's an early season date for two ranked teams. Be great to see Doug Altenberg coming back after a bad knee for the fighting Illini. Ball is at the 21. Nice scoring drive, six plays, and he kept it for three and a half minutes. Touchdown by two touchdowns. Stump goes out of bounds at the 25. He got four, and he was looking at Carl Banks when he stepped over the sideline. Looks like a very similar philosophy the Giants will use, and that's that basic zone defense. Let Lawrence Taylor get into the pass rush, play a zone defense, and force the quarterback to dump it off to the backs. The same thing they did against the Washington Redskins in their last football game. Can you throw deep against the Giants? On occasion, very seldom though. You have to pick your spots, maybe once or twice. You gotta try it, right? Yep. Here's J.T. Smith coming back and catching the ball. He held on. It's very close to a first down after the hit by Elvis Patterson. J.T. Smith has been a prolific receiver. There's Bill Parcell sitting on a 14-0 lead. Right in the middle, you'll see Herb Welsh is the, is, is the safety man, the deepest of the deep. And he's just going to make sure that nobody gets behind him. You see him get back to the middle of the field, and you see all those linebackers down underneath. They say, look, go ahead, throw the five, six, seven-yard pass. That's the reason why you can't throw deep. Gene Stallings, his club hampered by penalties today. And he's trailing 14 to nothing. First down at the 31. head on the hard turf you'll see right at the bottom of your screen is pepper johnson he's coming in to meet farrell now lomax steps up in and sally's going to chase him grab him by the arm and swing him around and waiting for him on the other side is pepper johnson Not a bad combination the ball's back at the 27 three minutes left in the half you know you get that big pass rush and you get that zone stop drop back deep when you can't put your backs out into the pattern, it's hard to complete passes downfield. But he was still looking to throw the pass instead of taking off with the run. He's not a runner. He doesn't want to be either. That time they brought more than four, and Lawrence Taylor and Jerome Sally got in there. This is the problem that Neil Lomax faces. You'll see the ball is snapped. He's just got nowhere to go with the football. The Giants are playing man-to-man -man underneath with help backed up, and there's just nowhere to go. Everybody is covered. He has no time and no place to go with the football other than down and to eat it. Now if the Giants can stop the Cardinals on third down, they should be in great shape again with 225 left in the half. It is third down and 23. With the shotgun, with Smith to the left. the 
seventh sack. Lawrence Taylor was way out of the play, came back and got it. You can't, you cannot bring any harm or accuse the offensive line of that one. They rushed, they only had two defensive linemen. Just in the middle of your screen, there were two defensive linemen and Lawrence Taylor. Of course, that's like five people rushing. But look at all those people back in coverage for three receivers. Lomax has nowhere to go with the football. That time, he should have unloaded the football. Lawrence Taylor just pushed him. Get out of here. You're going down. He's been sacked eight times, and this is the fifth punt by the Cardinals. Seven. Four of those sacks, he should have gotten rid of the football. You just can't hold the football against this type of a defense. This is the sort of play that got Lomax benched previously this season. I don't I, I don't quite understand what's happening to him. In the When he came back, he started to make quick decisions and throw the ball away. That's one thing a quarterback has to be willing to do. Don't worry about your passing percentage. Make decisions and get rid of the football. Two minutes left in the half. The Cardinals will be punting when we come back. Taylor and others leading the way has the crowd roaring. They've won their division. And they're winning here 14 to nothing with two minutes left in the half. And these fans just, just want to let off some steam. But here's Cater punting. De Bernardo snapped the ball, and McConkey is back at the 50. And all of this answers the question: Why do you want the home field advantage? This is why. <laughs> Kick by Cater. McConkey fair catch. And it's not easy to catch the ball in this stadium. The ball's back at the 47 for the Giants, who have a minute and 53 to add to their 14 0 lead. That was a 45 yard kick. Dick Vermeil, former outstanding coach and great broadcaster now, is in the studio with Brent and Irv, scores and highlights musical QBs in Chi Town. Who will wind up quarterbacking the Chicago Bears the remainder of the season and on in? My guess is they're going to go with Doug Flutie. You know, and you're just seeing the uh, name of the city of Chicago. Who wants to go there and try to win a championship? Who wants that's to go why, there in January? That's why the Giants want this home field advantage. Arthon and Morris. He makes you miss, doesn't he? And he gained eight before Young finally stopped him. There's two Joe Morrises, the one that plays on AstroTurf and the one that plays on grass. And all you have to do is look at the rushing yardage of the New York Giants when the team plays on grass like they did in Washington and in San Francisco and when they get home here or play on the turf. He's an entirely different back on, on AstroTurf, a better one. A lot of players complain about the turf. He likes it. In fact, he sleeps on it. <laughs> at the St. Louis 45. Morris is really a wrestle down by Freddie Joe Nunn. Now Nunn is in his second year. He's the number one draft pick out of Mississippi. The Giants have called timeout and he's been a disappointing high draft. Well, Y.A. Tittle is a name that all Giant fans remember and uh, we talked it over with him. It has been a long time. Uh, I didn't know it was 23 years. Uh, obviously, uh, when the Giants win the title this weekend, uh, I think they will. Uh, I'm going to be very proud. Uh, it has been a long struggle, and uh, I don't know why it took so long, but uh, the Giants have a great football team this year, and there's a good chance they can go all the way. The team is, has, is more mature. The offensive line last year was young, and they were good. This year, they are a little older, not too old, but they are better. Uh, I think Phil Sims is, uh, has matured again also. Uh, seems like last year he made more mistakes at crucial times than he has made this year. And I think that's uh, helped his team a lot. And, and of course, the continuance of the good running of uh, the running backs uh, this year has really uh, helped his passing game where he didn't have to throw so much. So 
and all quarterbacks, all old quarterbacks will tell you it's nice when you don't have to throw. Be nice when you talk about old quarterbacks. Third down, excuse me. That is third down, third down and four. That was a giant timeout. Here's a first down to Bavaro. First and goal. think Bavaro is going to spend a little time in Honolulu in January. He should. Just to the right of your screen, he, you see him block, block Bob Glasby. Leonard Smith was supposed to cover him, and Bavaro just gets down the middle of the field. Had a great day. Got on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Beat the Washington, really helped beat the Washington Redskins last week. Had a big, big day. First three catches in the game were to the tight end. He could go over a thousand yards in receiving if Sims, at whom you're looking, can continue to get the ball to him. First and goal at the nine, and 58 seconds left in the half. Bavaro's had a tough year. He had a broken jaw, and he was playing with his jaw wired. And he's had other injuries. Cleveland's still leading 14 to 3, second quarter at Cincinnati, and the Giants, excuse me, not the Giants, the 49ers leading at New England by six in the second quarter. You know, as quiet as Bavaro was, I don't think his teammates knew his jaw was wired for three or two or three weeks. He, he doesn't say much. He doesn't say much at all, but boy, he lets his performance on a field speak for him. Not only all those passes he has caught, but he's a good run blocker. He, he's a complete tight end. You know, you, you talk to Bill Parcells, you say, what do you need in a what do you need in a tight end? You need him to be an effective blocker and a guy who runs precise routes also can catch the football and he, he said, can catch Cardinal before the game said we stop we have to stop Morris number one and Bavaro number two and Sims number three they've stopped Sims but not the other two guys that's right 58 seconds left in the half has really helped out with Lionel Manuel uh, absent from the giant lineup. And hopefully they expect to get Lionel Manuel back uh, next week. He practiced a little bit latter part of last week, a little bit more this week. In talking to him yesterday, he said his knee is feeling much better and he hopes to be back. He wants to, he, he gives him that speed and that experience at the wide receiver position. And of course there was out without George Adams, Curtis McGriff and others who are on the injured reserve list. Second down and goal from the nine. down now the clock is going to run they'll have ample time but the Giants had better get with it because they have only one timeout remaining they lead 14 to nothing and they are going to let the clock tick on down well in this situation you, you've almost got to call a pass and let the quarterback make the decision for you try and put the ball in the end zone for the touchdown if not you throw the incompletion and come in and kick the field goal two running touchdowns by Joe Morris Galbraith is in there now Blitzing. Pass is incomplete. He tried to get it to McConkey in the end zone as he and Bobby Johnson were crossing. And it's fourth down. Bavaro was blocking on that play. We talked about Bavaro's ability to be a pass catcher, but watch this. He jumps on inside to pick up Lonnie Young. Doesn't really do a great job, but at least broke his stride so he couldn't have a, a clean run at Phil Sims. And the crossing pattern was missed. Now they have to try for the field goal. Allegre is 20 out of 28 and has solved the problem for the Giants in the kicking department. This year they've used Joe Cooper and Bob Thomas before Allegre got the call. Bart Oates is snapping. Rutledge is holding. At the 16, it's a 26-yard try. It's 17 to nothing, and a flag goes down. Offsides against the Cardinals, declined by the Giants. Field goals should stand. Our referee is Joe Theismann. Offside against the Cardinals, declined. The field goal stands, and it's 17 to nothing with 12 seconds left in the half. I imagine Parcells, Joe, if he can nail this game down early, will put in some additional people. Get some playing time, perhaps to Rutledge, their backup quarterback. I don't think so. 
Maybe not. No, I don't think so. Coaches don't necessarily like to do that. They want to keep their number one people out there as much as they can so that they can get comfortable. And Gene Stallings just is not happy. There's Rutledge on the sidelines. Stallings is hot. He's yelling at the officials again. He's been bending their ear most of the afternoon. He is not a calm person. Well, next Sunday after Green Bay comes here and plays the Giants on Saturday, we have a doubleheader game. Washington against Philadelphia at Philadelphia or Tampa Bay against St. Louis. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern time. Redskins are looking to get back on the winning track. They've lost two tough football games to the Giants and to the Broncos. And after that, the Bears against Dallas, and that will be meaningful because both the Giants and the Bears will be buying for the home field advantage. Allegri will kick it off. Sikahama is deep. Swift kick. The ball is touched. The clock starts. Troy Johnson has it. He's tough to catch, but he can't get outside. And we have two seconds left. One more snap of the ball, and the Giants will take a 17-0 lead into the dressing room. Speaking of the dressing room, the way the Cardinals are moving now, that is the direction is the poor direction in which to be moving in this stadium. The best way is toward their backs. St. Louis will receive the second half kickoff, by the way. The other problem with the way they're moving is they've got to move 82 yards if they expect to get any kind of points in two seconds, which they won't. The first time they met, they sacked Lomax seven times, and they've already done that in the first half today. It's 17-0 for the division champion Giants. These fans on a cold day love the action. Two rushing touchdowns for Joe Morris. Two yards, three yards, and a field goal of 26 yards by Allegri. George Young has an enormous ego? Well, I think general managers tend to get too much credit when a guy does a great job like Bill Parcells has. Oh, yeah. You know. I want the coach to get the credit. What a coach, coach of the year, Bill Parcells. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is on the sideline. It helps to have a guy like Joe Morris, folks. I mean, what a weapon he's turned into. Remember when he was drafted and a lot of people said it's too small, can't get the job done? He's just the right size. The <laughs> perfect see. size. So Low center of gravity. That's, that's right. Tough to catch up with. 17 0, Giants with the lead there. Philadelphia, Dallas. Want to show you the prettiest run of the day and, and really perhaps the best of the season. Look who's drafting the Cowboys, folks. Benny Testaverde. It says, I want to go down there and see if there's a way they'll trade for him. But here's Herschel Walker, Dick. Herschel Walker starts a little off tackle play to the left, changes his mind and his direction, breaks a few sloppy tackles. Now it's a foot race to the end zone, and Roy Neil Young is not going to catch him from behind. You know, he does five. 500 sit-ups a day. I wonder if he did his foot sit-ups today. <laughs> <laughs> I Last night, it. watching television. Yeah. <laughs> Green Bay and Tampa Bay. Notice, please, the games that Vinny Testaverde is not at. And Packers lead the Bucks by seven points. Cleveland, Cincinnati, big game here. 14-3 in the AFC Central. Bernie Kosar, 47 yards to Webster Slaughter. But the Brown defense has shut down all those weapons of the Bengals, at least so far. 14-0, Buffalo with the lead. They go into the second half of that game. Jim Kelly out. He is complaining of dizziness. New Orleans over Atlanta and it is 7-0. The Saints are leading the fading Falcons there at the half of that game. Now, here's the other big one. 49ers over the Patriots. It is 16-10 right now as we check in on a chilly day up there for Coach Walsh. And we can watch the Patriots off the play fake. Tony Eason to Greg Batty. Eight-yard score. And Dick, they were ahead, and then Joe Cribbs and the Niners came back. Nice little off-tackle play here. Really well-designed. Very seldom do you see a running back run in from inside the five-yard line standing up, Brent. You know, a little bit later, it looked like an instant replay, these two plays. <laughs> yeah, well, Joe Montana, the quarterback sneak there from inside the one, doesn't make it. But they come right back again. Montana again over the top. This time he goes in with Roger Craig. You know, Dick, we should point out, they've missed an extra point. 49ers now. Yeah. Wershing's had kind of an erratic season for them. And I'll tell you, that can really affect a team in a game. Oh, yes, yeah. The Redskins. Yeah, the Redskins. But that was really not the kicker's fault. That was a bad snap. Remember, he didn't really even get a chance to kick the ball. Okay, so we will not hold. That's Wershing. one time we can't blame the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> we want to take a look at the bear quarterback situation. We'll do that with Dick right after these messages from your local state. 17 to nothing in favor of the Giants. There's an ugly for you, huh? 
Sometimes ugly can be beautiful. <laughs> the Giants record, by the way, eight sacks in a game, and they'll be going to tie or break that record. Joe will get a pretty good early indication about this Cardinal team. They've only won three, but they really haven't quit in any of their games, and I'm wondering what's going to happen in the second half. Well, I just think that Gene Stallings has had to tell his ball club at halftime, go out, relax, and just play, and don't worry about anything. Allegra great kicks to Eric Swanson, and he was hoping for a good bounce, but didn't get it either at the 10-yard line. Swanson thought the ball was going to bounce into the end zone, but it took a bad bounce as far as he was concerned. And the ball is at the 10, and that's been a problem for the Cardinals starting very much in their own territory. Well, what happens is you have to take a ball like that in the air. You just you just can't wait for it to bounce. I think he lost sight of where he was on the football field. You used to run back those I used kicks. to run back punts, not kickoffs. No, right. Too many people get going too fast on kickoffs. You can really get banged that way. Punts, they don't get moving quite as fast. Well, talking about moving fast, this giant defense has been really coming after Neil Omex. Same three-man front with Jim Burt back in there. And Mitchell had to struggle to get about three. Here's what happened in the first half statistically. Look at there. You talk about being pounded and overwhelmed. That's what happened. Three Mitchell. yards passing. And Mitchell just got three yards on that run out to the 13. Comparison, one big run of 54 yards for Morris, and he's had two touchdowns, two yards, three yards. Second down, seven. Roy Green in motion. And it was Mitchell getting the first down. The ball was hanging precariously, but he latched on for a 10-yard run. I don't know how he finds this ball. You'll see, and they run the similar sweep that the Giants run and let Stump Mitchell cut up behind the block. Of, there you go. And there's a, whoa, hold it. <laughs> there it is. Well, it isn't that the Cardinals aren't getting the ball to bounce in their direction. They're just running into a real good defensive unit. Yeah, they've had a couple of good breaks today. One earlier on a Roy Green fumble. That Cardinals recovered. The Cardinals have to find places in this game where they can build on. This drive is one they can build on. Now they've gotten the first down. They've got to continue. And Mitchell couldn't clear out, and Roy Green was trying to block for him, and he couldn't get much done. Perry Williams, how good is he at supporting the run on the corner? He's very good. You know, none of their corners, Elvis Patterson and Perry Williams, they're not real as far as nifty backs go you know you get you can make moves on them but when it comes to supporting the run and when it comes to straight line speed both these guys are very talented no gain on that play lost about a half a yard buffalo leading at indianapolis second down Screen pass to Green, and what a good defensive play by Patterson. Joe Theismann was just talking about him and Perry Williams, the other corner. He read it, and he killed it. Well, what happens there is, is that the Giants are playing what is basically a double zone, and a double zone means that you're going to double cover the two outside receivers, put somebody up on their nose, and back them up with somebody. It's very difficult to run a screen pass when the cornerback knows he has help behind him. He just stays right in Green's pocket as soon as the ball is thrown. Bang! Hit loss. Third and 15. And on third down, the Cardinals haven't been very good. Troy Johnson checks in for St. Louis. Lasker is in there defensively. A flag is down, and the left guard, Ray Brown, the rookie number 62, beat the snap count. Down. You might wonder why the left guard is going to have that type of a movement. It's very simple. Number 56, instead of lining up on the outside of Marshall, Lawrence Taylor moves on the inside right over Ray Brown. Just his presence alone, just Lawrence Taylor's presence alone creates problems for offensive linemen. He just created a third and 20. J.K. 
Keith Smith and Roy Green to the left, Johnson to the right. Greg Lasker is the fifth back for the Giants. Four-man rush, and he threw it away. He threw it away under the blitz of Lawrence Taylor. You know, you really can't call it a blitz because he lined up as part of a four-man front. He just upright, and he takes off. No, he's not a blitz. There you see him moved inside, just to the right of your screen, number 56. Ray Brown tries to block him, and that wasn't much of a block. And, you know, it takes three people to block him anyway. They bring Marshall around inside, and Taylor makes the play. After he knocked Neal down, he picked him up, Here which is, is the, the least he could do. The sixth punt by Cater. He just got it away. Hockey calls for a fair catch, and the Giants will go from their 43-yard line. That was only a 31-yard kick, and it was darn near blocked. Defensive line of the Giants is still intact. Brad Benson, Billy Ard, Bart Oates, Chris Godfrey, Carl Nelson. Last week, Benson, at whom you're looking, number 60, was the NFC Offensive Player of the Week, the first time they've ever selected an interior lineman. Now today, Chris Godfrey, number 61, has been all over the place with some great run block. First down at the Cardinal, 43. Johnson in motion and a reverse to Johnson. It's wide open, folks. And coming up very strongly and with a good tackle is Lonnie Young, number 43. In there, Joe Theismann. Well, first of all, see, Phil Sims going to hand off. If you run the sweep to Joe Morris, he carries the ball most of the time. Look at the reaction of that St. Louis defense. You get him going in one direction. Now you come back with Bobby Johnson. Out of here is Phil Sims going to lead. See, Phil, he's a quarterback. He's, uh, wait, hold it. No, shucks. Gosh, I would. he would have got the guy. You know, you turn around and you say, if you'd have just made that Sims one guy blocked. miss, one guy. Yeah, I bet. Second down, three. stayed tight with his blockers and came very close to a first down. That reverse served two purposes. Number one, it let the Cardinals know that the Giants are willing to go back the other way and they cannot continue to pursue as quickly towards Morris. Secondly, it makes him stay home so that the offensive lineman can block and take him head on. It's a first down at the Cardinal 33 and there you see the Cardinals have been buried most of the afternoon. Their own 15 and the Giants at their own 47. We play the first five minutes of this third quarter. Dean Stalling is the baseball cap. Conkey and Robinson, the wide receivers. Robinson. Oh, at the last moment, it was touched a bit by Cedric Mack and dropped by Stacy Robinson. I think Mack got a hand up. Well, if he didn't, he sure did distract him. Watch this offensive line block. Phil Simms not having a great day completion-wise. He's only completed three, but you'll see no pressure. Now, everybody talks about why have the Cardinals not been able to get any interceptions. Simply because there's nobody putting any pressure on the quarterback. And if he's got time to throw, at least he's going to throw it away. There you saw a nice play by Cedric Mack. With a late rush out of the linebacker spot by Freddie Joan Nunn, but he didn't get near Sims, and it's second and ten. Sims leading 17 to nothing is uh, inclined to take his second sack of the day and this one by Al Baker who had nine and a half before the day and now we have a Cardinal player down Al Baker playing that right defensive end position the top of your screen there you see him up against Bill Ard goes out Benson he just gets on the inside now Sims had plenty of time to make a decision and Baker just trips him up and one of the best Cardinal players David Galloway is on the deck the clock stopped, 9.37 left in the third quarter. We haven't checked the AFC playoff picture. A big win by Denver yesterday, and they've clinched their division. Nobody else has clinched their division, but Cleveland's on their way today at Cincinnati, and New England's having a tussle with the 49ers. Those are the division leaders. Now, the others who could get into the playoffs. The Jets, even though they've lost four in a row, and still have the best record of any of the other contenders. And then Cincinnati and the Raiders, Seattle and Kansas City. And 
A lot of those teams play later today, and so the playoff picture will become much clearer this evening. David Galloway is still down. You know, Joe, you and I were talking about uh, pro bowlers in the NFC. We don't know that much about the AFC. We don't play them, play, or watch them play that often. We'll see how Galloway. Right in the middle of your screen, number 65. And I, I think what's going to happen is he gets himself just out of whack and gets pushed. Hit that turf very hard. Four to nothing blowout, but now the Cowboys have a shot at revenge. Chicago collides with Dallas next Sunday on CBS Sports. David Galloway walked off cradling his left arm. We'll get a report. Mark Duda, who played at Maryland, is the new nose guard for the Cardinals. Third down and 19 for New York. Galbraith is in there. And a flag is down against the Giants. And the pass is no good out of bounds and a penalty in addition Bobby Johnson caught it but flopped out of bounds before he could get his feet in the receiver was illegally in motion he started to move and then stopped reset himself and then continued to go so it's almost like a double clutch what should he have done should have just stopped <laughs> illegal formation number 88 of the offense penalty is declined Fourth down. That's why the penalty is declined. It is fourth, John, fourth down. Bobby Johnson is the one who brought the flag. Well, what happened is he was lined up in the backfield. By taking that step forward, he turned himself into, a, into the tight end position, and the outside receiver had him covered, and you can't have that guy covered. This will be the fifth punt by Lindetta. And Sikahama waits at his 10. So even though the Cardinals trail 17 to nothing, they've made the Giants punt five times. Sikahama down inside the 15. Running into the kicker. Yeah, that's not running into the kicker. I didn't think so either. I, you know, I don't understand this. I really don't. I, I'm, you know, I don't. I half thought that the kicker went into him no, as much as anything. No, what happens is the guy tries to go in. He puts his arm up in the air, and he's being blocked, and he tries to hold his balance. You see, right there, right up the middle, he puts his hands up. Now, he doesn't try. He, he falls defense, in. Running into the kicker. It's Broderick Sargent. Running into the kicker, five yards and a first down. Broderick Sargent. There you see, he hangs his foot up in the air. Broderick Sargent just bumps into him. I think that the if the league is going to have meetings, they ought to have meetings and take a look at that penalty. They've got to be more stringent with what is constituting roughing the kicker. So the Giants continue the drive. They're at the Cardinal 37 with Carthon. And a give to the fullback. Carthon, known more for his blocking, carried the ball for about seven yards. Let's check that New England game with Brent Musburger. Well, Jack, that botched extra point still may haunt the 49ers. New England goes ahead. Tony Collins, they convert, and they're up by one, 17-16 over the Niners. Let's go back to Jack. Here's our score, 17 to nothing. Second down and four. And Morris makes it third and one with that run. Spun down by Leonard Smith. Let's check Cincinnati. How are they doing? Cleveland widening their lead. And a victory would clinch the division for Cleveland. And Dallas staying alive by a point in the third quarter at home against Philadelphia and Atlanta going down. If they lose, they are out, and Green Bay is ahead at Tampa Bay. I'm going to give myself a chance to get ahead here a little bit. Buffalo leads in Indianapolis, and as they measure, we see that David Galloway is back in the car. I have lineup. not been right all year. I think they made it. By golly, I got it. Morris runs for a first down to the Cardinal 26. We showed you that uh, Indianapolis score, and they're trailing at home against Buffalo. And that's an important score because of the Testaverde sweepstakes with a million dollars added. They have the worst record, and they might get the best quarterback in college football. First and ten. Bobby Johnson in motion. The blitz is on, and Carthon is taken down. 
down by numerous Cardinals led by Anthony Bell. Now Bell was the number one pick this year out of Michigan State and he didn't turn out too good. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I don't agree with you on that. I don't, it isn't a question of him not turning out too good. There's an awful lot to learn at the linebacker position. If you want to compare positions, the quarterback position on offense and the linebacker position on defense are two of the most difficult to learn. He's very gifted, he's very talented. He's playing on the outside left linebacker position behind Freddie Joe Nunn, and it's just going to take a little while for him to get more comfortable. Here's the second down and 10. Galloway is playing for the Cardinals. And a noise down there. Three-man rush. Sideline pattern. And what a magnificent. He's out of bounds. Incomplete. Incomplete is the call. Lionel Washington thought he had an interception, but he put it away while out of bounds. And speaking of interceptions, the Cardinals this year have had only eight. That's exactly right. Lionel Washington had two of them. There's Sims again getting great protection. Now he tries to make the throw. Lionel Washington. What a great effort. It's a great effort. Now watch the right foot just does. Oh, he caught him. He tried to sneak it back in. Look at him go up in the air. Good job by the officials all day long here at Giants Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Sims is only three out of 17. And still his club leads 17 to nothing. That's what happens when you, you play great defense. You just don't have to put the ball in the air. They wanted to work on their running game. I'm sure Sims wanted a few more passes completed as well. Third wide receiver is McConkie, and it's third and 10. McConkie goes in motion. down for Sims. He ran into Lonnie Young. That was a 14-yard scamper. This late in the year, I'm sure the Giants hold their collective breaths whenever Sims starts to run. You see Bill Parcells peeking to make sure Phil Sims gets up. Uh, it's not the nicest thing for a uh, coach to see his quarterback take off. And Phil Sims was maligned a lot earlier in the year. They booed him. He got one of the loudest ovations during introduction here today. And he's starting to play the kind of football that the Giants are going to need from the quarterback position to propel him on into the playoffs. This is the second time today that a penalty has sustained a New York drive. And it's a first down at the Cardinal 12. Bobby Johnson is in there and to the left side. Stacy Robinson run by Morris. Tried to slam it up the middle. He was slowed down and knocked down. E.J. Jr. was there, number 54. Thus far in this game, Morris, two touchdowns, two yards, three yards, both rushing. Cardinals have total only 45 yards, and the quarterback, Lomax, has been sacked seven times. Only one less than the giant record. Second and ten. in there the blitz is on and the blitz pays off against the run well it's been the only way that the cardinals have been able to stop the giant running game what it means is that if the giants want to take advantage of this sims is going to have to start completing passes and they're going to try and put the ball up in the air they're not going to be able to run the ball effectively against linebackers that keep shooting inside they fill those gaps and it's third down tony galbraith checks in Parcells trying to add to his 17 to nothing lead. Third down. Bavaro is off on a wing. Now Bavaro's in the pass pattern, and the pass is. Is it caught? Yes, it is, and it's first and goal on a diving catch by Phil McConkie. McConkie ended up right back in the right spot. Now it is fourth down. It's not enough for a first down. Evidently, he did catch it cleanly. McConkie went to Green Bay. We've been put on waivers, and then the Giants said we made a mistake, and they got him back. That's right. Talking to Phil McConkie, he said, you know, it shows a lot of character and a lot of guts by the Giants to say we made a mistake. 
They not only wanted him back, they traded for him to get him back for that experience. Rutledge will hold at the 13. It's a 23-yard try by Allegre. He's one for one today. Oates will snap the ball. Nothing with three and a half left in the third quarter. The nation's premier teams, the Fighting Illini of Illinois, take on the North Carolina Tar Heels next Saturday on CBS Sports. And before that basketball game, North Carolina and Illinois, it'll be a short work week for the Giants. They entertain Green Bay here next Saturday. It starts at 12 o'clock with the NFL Today, Eastern Time. Then the 12.30 kickoff here at Giants Stadium. Allegre booting the ball to the Cardinals. Sikahema and Swanson are deep. From the goal line, Swanson. He stumbles and goes down across the 20-yard line. Downfield covering was Lee Roussin. Playing on the home field has been a big advantage for all of those teams in the last five years, Joe. I've had the opportunity of playing two Super Bowls, and we did win the NFC division title and happened to play at home. And when you've got a stadium like the Redskins have in Washington or like the Giants have here in New Jersey, when you come out on the football field and you get those fans going behind you, the noise itself creates problems for the offensive team and gives you an advantage. And if the Giants and the Bears end up tied with their record, the Giants get to the home field because of a better conference record. Here's a delay to Farrell. And a worthwhile run across the 25 before Andy Hedden brought him down, number 54. These Giants have some linebackers who are reserve linebackers who'd be starters on a lot of other teams. Talking about Andy Hedden, Byron Hunt. Pepper Johnson they talk, are stacked at that position talk about Byron Hunt I have I have two false front teeth compliments of Byron Hunt oh yes he uh, he came on a free blitz uh, back in 1982 and redid my two uppers NFL insurance pay for that yeah good seven yard pickup I found got to the 30 and it's third and one coming up as he got away from Lawrence Taylor we ought to save that piece of tape because that doesn't happen very often not only does that happen very often watch what happens at the end of this play you see Taylor at the top of the screen they try and run a pitch and Taylor just cuts him back now he's going to run right into Lawrence boom Lance Lance Smith on the tackle yeah. knock stump right back into the backfield it is third down and about a foot We'll see how good the giant defense is here. Look at those two hits. Smith and Mitchell head to head. Ron Wolfley is in there for the Cardinals. Wolfley off the bench, lost yards. That's how good they are. I thought there was going to be a fake as the ball was given to. Wolfley was blocking for him. And they failed to make it, and it's fourth down. The Giants are just tough, tough, tough to run against. Uh, if you can't run in Denver second, if you can't run against somebody, you're going to have a heck of a tough time throwing the football. The running part of the football game and good defense are the two keys that get you into the playoffs and give you a chance at Super Bowl. There's a seventh punt by Cater, and the win stops it. It's a giant bounce and is down by the Cardinals. And we have 119 left in the third quarter. That was a 22-yard kick. Well, two NFL teams are going to boogie out to Pasadena in the Rose Bowl for the January 25th game. And these Giants, of course, might very well be there. CBS is going to cover the playoffs, and also CBS has the Super Bowl this year, and so you'll hear Pat Summerall and John Madden and Herb Cross and the whole gang from out there. Brings back wonderful memories for me. That's the Super Bowl 17 that the Washington Redskins won. That's a lovely ring you're wearing. The ball is at the Giant 48. 
Marathon and Morris. They're playing everybody all the way. Morris has two touchdowns. And he got five or six. He's not hurting his rushing average. Bob Clasby, an interesting kid, number 79, made that tackle. Clasby's father played at Harvard, and he was a captain of the Harvard football team. Clasby played at Notre Dame. He's not... He's not a premier defensive end, but he's a worker, a plugger. He is. He's one of he's, he's one of those guys that just gives you a good day's work. I, I think there are certain areas that the Cardinals want to look to improve their football team, and in the defensive line is probably one of those areas. Lee Roussan is in there at the running back spot. Morris is out. 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Flags are down all over the place, and Roussan is down getting a first down. While they sort this out, let's tell you that Joe Morris has gone over the 100 mark. He's hiding there. He's hard to find sometimes. 19 carries, 105 yards, two touchdowns. Another big day for the little guy. You know, he looks a little out there in the football field. You sit and talk to him, you know, he's not that small. Yeah, everybody talks about little guy. I was a considered a little guy. He's a little guy. You know, like he's not a little guy. motion, number 22 offense, two men moving. Two men moving. Just, Still second down. Just smaller targets to hit, that's all. That's right. They, in, you know, in baseball, they talk about little Pete Rose. He weighs about 200 pounds. In football, they call Joe Morris little because he's 195 pounds. Balls at midfield. Well, Indianapolis has changed their score against Buffalo. They have the worst record in football, and they'd have the rights to test a birdie, but now they're tied with Buffalo at 14-0. This is second down and eight. Nice play by the linebacker on Bavaro. That was Freddie Joe Nunn staying with the tight end. This guy's had a tough season, his second year in the NFL, but He's still learning. He's a lot like uh, Anthony Bell. And if those two linebackers can progress, it would make the Cardinals better. And that play takes us to 11 seconds left in the third quarter, and it's third and eight coming up. Freddie Joe Nunn's played a lot better the last few weeks. He's been involved more in the pass rush. He's become a better uh, run type of a defender. And now you see the type of pass cover man he is. Duda checks in for the Cardinals. For a first down by Bobby Johnson. That's a first down at the Cardinal 35. And there's no protest from the Cardinal sideline. Marks the end of the quarter. The end of the third quarter. The score 20 nothing Giants. A word from your local station. And we are across the Hudson here at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. The Giants have scored in each quarter and they lead 20 to nothing with 15 minutes remaining to play. They're at the Cardinal 35 with a first down. They have Carthon and Joe Morris still in there. Fumble and it belongs to St. Louis. Cedric Mack came away with a Joe Morris fumble. Now the Cardinals have had a couple of good bounces today. They have. Leonard Smith's going to hit, make this hit. Joe Morris cuts up inside. See the blocking on Noga. Freddie Joe Nunn, EJ Jr. try now from behind. Leonard Smith's going to hit the ball and just pop it up in the air. And Cedric Mack catches it in, on a short hop. Makes the fumble recovery. And the Cardinals haven't had many good breaks. Recovered 10 of 36 fumbles. Now yeah. you figure the norm in the National Football League is half. And they've intercepted only eight passes, but they do have the ball at their own 12. Mitchell and Farrell. So a first down pass inside to J.T. Smith and a first down catch. Now the game is either going to go one way or the other. The Giants are going to pile up more than 20 points, or the Cardinals who are going to open up here are going to make a run at them. Now Cleveland is going to win apparently their division the central of the AFC and all of these other teams Kansas City the Raiders and Seattle and the Miami team are hoping that Cleveland wins that game. Here's a pass to Marsh underneath and that's a first down. 
Because you see, Cleveland had the best record going in of those two. So that's going to hurt Cincinnati if they lo do lose. And Green Bay coming here next Saturday is ahead of Tampa Bay. You see the pack next Saturday on CBS. Buffalo and Indianapolis are tied in the fourth quarter. And here we have almost 15 minutes left in this game. A little short passes. They haven't gone deep against the Giants. We have the Cardinal 42. And you know what Bill Parcells told us about him? He's only a rookie out of Washington State. He's going to be one of the best players in football. His holding penalty against the Cardinals again. Absolutely. Bill Parcells feels like Eric Howard. Holding it's number 58, offense. Penalty is declined. Second down. So that's the second holding call on the big rookie center out of Texas, Gene Chilton. Well, as I mentioned, Eric Howard is six foot four, 268 pounds. And Parcells, you know, he says it's not necessarily his size or his speed, but he's a guy who just gets so pumped up and so ready to play. And how about when you can't play Jim Burt at the nose and you get this kid available? And also Jerome Sally. So the Giants are not only good, they have depth in second and 12. Using those blockers nicely. Big run by Mitchell. Boy, can he use that blocking. He stayed right there very patiently and finally was hauled down by Kenny Hill. You know, we've talked a lot about Joe Morris and his ability to string out a sweep or string out a long play and then cut it up. It's a very similar play that the, that the Giants run. There you see Marsh out in front on Banks. And you see him cut up inside. Stump Mitchell actually runs better to his left because he's got the bad right foot and he can't plant and cut up field. He's had some of his biggest gains cutting back on the left side. Lawrence Taylor uh, acts as though his right hand is bothering him a little bit. We'll keep an eye on him. At the Giant 37 now. the most the Giants have sacked a quarterback all year. That's the eighth time, and Eric Howard, about whom we were just talking, got that sack. He's got rookie versus rookie, Howard on Chilton. The Giant record for sacks in one game is 11. Today they have eight. The only oh. thing I can figure, if, if Lawrence has hurt a little bit, he might have gotten too close to some kryptonite, because that's the only way Superman can be nicked. <laughs> I mean, somebody must have hung around there. There you see him try and make the play. Even stumbling, he still makes the tackle. Eight sacks of Lomax. Short pass out here to Farrell, and it was faded by the linebacker, Pepper Johnson, the rookie out of Ohio State. This looks like a track meet with Lawrence Taylor. Down the lower part of your screen, you want to see what, how quick Lawrence Taylor is and the problem he presents. He's way away from the play. Now, he starts in and drops back, and there Farrell makes the catch. You see the tackle being made, but right at the top of your screen, Lawrence Taylor, that's his foot coming in. That's how close he is. He's always there. 50 left in the game. He told me once, you know, Joe, you can run, but you can't hide from me out here. Troy Johnson is the third wide receiver for St. Louis on third down and 16. And he popped that one up in a hurry, and it went off the hands of J.T. Smith. I think the Cardinals would love to see the Giants blitz. That way they'd have at least a quick opportunity to get rid of the football. But they don't blitz that often. They don't have to blitz that often. Simply because of one man, Lawrence Taylor, his ability to put pressure on a quarterback all by himself a allows that whole defense to play zone. Standing ovation for the Giant defensive unit. And this is the eighth punt by Greg Cater. Phil McConkey is back there. play by the Cardinals to cover it at about the three. There are no flags, and we have 11.25 left in the game. Freddie Joe Nunn downfield to down the ball. Brother Jamie up at Michigan will be proud of his older brother, Joe. 20 rushes, 
Over 100 yards today, and look what that does for his career, Joe. That's right. He breaks his own club record, 13.45, 12 TDs. Of course, his touchdown performance was up last year quite a bit, but this year's rushing record is up. On the other hand, as Dallas hangs on to a one-point lead over the Eagles, Sims is only 5 out of 20, starting from the three-yard line. Keying on the other back. That's another thing that Morris does for you. He opens the way for Carthon, and Lonnie Young had to come up to make the tackle. Well, that's why they ran the reverse earlier, because the defense reacts to where Joe Morris goes. Now you run the fullback up the middle, trying to pull the linebackers out. Look at there, the 49ers and a field goal by Wershing have gone back on top in their game at New England. Both teams need that one badly. Second down and two. wrapped him up very quickly. We'll check the forward progress. Oh, he made it. He did. Yeah, he made it. Okay. It was Freddie Joe Nunn, David Galloway in on the hit, and Bill Parcells along the sideline. He said, as we look at Gene Stallings, Stallings is going to have a different sort of winner than Parcells is going to have. Parcells said, I want to do it one time just to be able to say. I did it. I did it, That's meaning right. we, of course. That's right, his football team. He wants to take that ball club all the way. Now he's mad. It's first down and ten. Ten minutes left. See Sims walk up and say, Zeke, Zeke, move over on the other side. Two tight ends. Mowat and Bavaro. Morris looking for that cutback, and Galloway and others pound him into the turf. 23 years ago, let's check the offense of this New York Giant team. Their offensive lineup 23 years ago. Their wide receivers, Del Schaffner, Joe Walden, Aaron Thomas. Does that ring some memory bells for you? Backfield, Phil King, Frank Gifford, Alex Webster, and Y.A. Tittle. The offensive line, Bookie Bolin, Daryl Des, Greg Larson, the center, Rosie Brown, and Jack Stroud. The offensive line back in 1963 when the Giants last won it. Second down, six. You know, it's, it may sound funny to say the Cardinals are doing a pretty good job on defense. They trail 20 to nothing. Morris has more than 100 yards, but they're still plugging away with Charlie Baker making that tackle. It's not funny at all. They've done a great job on defense. Today. They really have. There's just been no field position for their offense right. whatsoever. I mean, it started right from the opening gun. The Cardinal offense has, has been a problem. Their defense has played very, very well. You know, they've, they've held Sims to only five completions and Bavaro there on the sideline, you see. Looks like he either sprained an ankle or... You can bet knee. Parcells won't ignore that. Depth, of course, they have Zeke Moat to play the tight end. It's third down. Third down and five. And a handoff inside to Galbraith. He dives for a first down. And the Giants keep the ball with 8-10 left in the game. The Giants have scored in each quarter until now, and they lead 20 to nothing. The old inside handoff, the famous Dallas Cowboys play. Well, you know, the Dallas Cowboys really... Preston Pearson, right? They were pretty much responsible for the shotgun formation. Now a lot of teams have found a lot of success with it because of the amount of blitzing that's happening on defense. The quarterback has a chance to get the ball off. Ball at the, at the New York 25. They're not resting anybody. It's still Python and Morris. Johnson in motion. Little Joe. have the ball with 727 left in the game. Clasby tore the ball away and Freddie Joe Nunn came up with the ball and the Giants have their shutout in jeopardy. Well, it's the second turnover by New York. You'll see Joe Morris run up inside again. Now he cuts it back. Bob Glasby does a fine job of staying home, strips the ball away, lands right under Freddie Joe Nunn. The Cardinal defense has played very well today. Like I said, it's been field position that's really killed them. The whole first quarter, they were backed up with their backs against the wall and only gave up seven points. 
Second fumble by Morris, both of which were recovered by the Cardinals. This one at the New York 26. Mitchell and Farrell in the backfield. Green and J.T. Smith, the wide receivers. Just got back to the line of scrimmage, and he was buried. And with Leonard Marshall first there, number 70. Well, inst instead of just right there, you see, instead of just rushing the front three people with Lawrence Taylor, they bring the linebackers. And from the right of your screen, there you see Elvis Patterson come in with a corner blitz that forces Lomax up inside to where a lot of people were waiting for him. That's not a very nice position to get yourself into. Number 52, Pepper Johnson comes in in the linebacker spot. Harry Reasons, the linebacker, is out. That's counted as a sack. That's number nine against Lomax. Seven minutes left. out of bounds at the 15 and that's a first down he really pushed the linebacker Carl Banks off of him 11 yards well this is part of uh, New York's philosophy too is they said look we're just gonna we're just gonna jam up your wide receivers there's Roy Green now the only place to really go with the football you've got JT Smith inside Roy Green outside the corners have run off and you see the help from them there's nobody left to throw to but the tight end Neil Lomax does a good job in just finding Doug Marsh really handled Carl Banks who tried to make the tackle. First down at the 15. And off to Mitchell. Throw the ball. Ineligible man downfield. Now that's a touchdown. Who is downfield? Nobody. That's a touchdown. <laughs> A touchdown to Roy Green, and it's incredible that none of the linemen were downfield. And I don't think that that was a called play. i got to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. I don't think that one was called. Mitchell throws to Green for six. I think the offensive linemen were so busy, they were so busy trying to help Stump Mitchell that they never got downfield. Leonard Marshall had a hold of Mitchell, and he broke out of it. Harry Drop. Carson's got a shot at him. Hedden's got a shot at him. Now he just says, I'll throw it. Green caught it. That's his sixth touchdown pass reception of the year. The way the Cardinals have played, that could be their highlight <laughs> zone. And the extra point drive by Schubert is good. We have a 20 to 7 game with 637 remaining in the contest. never met anybody who didn't admire Stump Mitchell. You're absolutely right. When I used to play against him when I was a Redskin, I always used to worry when he got his hands on the football all year long for, this, for the Cardinals this year. He's been the man that's never stayed out of the lineup and never complained. And more than that, around St. Louis, when they want something done on the community level, they call Stump and he says yes. Bruce Ham from the 10. And he did not get to the 20-yard line. Next Sunday here on CBS, the final weekend of the regular season, Redskins trying to get back on the winning track, play at Philadelphia, and Tampa Bay plays at St. Louis. It's a doubleheader day on CBS television next Sunday. The Bears against the Dallas Cowboys before the Bears go into the playoffs, even if Dallas doesn't. Dallas still alive at this moment. You know, the Redskins made a change a few weeks back to get Max and Dejas in as a kicker and traded Mark Mosley to Cleveland, and it still doesn't look like the Redskins have solved that kicking problem. New York playing their first string club all the way. Sims to Morris. Morris is taken down after getting a couple. 6.20 left in the game. We're checking out for Mark Bavaro, the tight end who limped off earlier, and he is not in there. Moat, Zeke Moat is playing. We'll get a report on Bavaro for you. The Giants really need him. The Cardinals continue to get Leonard Smith involved, their strong safety, in trying to turn Joe Morris back inside. Atlanta continues to muddle the playoff picture by staying ahead in their game. Second and eight here. 550 remaining. Johnson in motion. Morris again. Noga made him go back inside, and Noga helped make the tackle. You want to take a look at a tough-looking guy. Not only tough-looking, but he is tough. That Noga is something. He is from American Samoa. 
And he's a mean-looking dude. His Boy, brother's he is. a heck of a football player for the University of Hawaii. Well, you know, he wears T-shirts around with bombs going off and bullet holes <laughs> in it. <laughs> you know, to get ready. You know, some people, they watch different games on a Saturday night before a ball game. He watches Commando and Terminator and movies like that just to get him in the right frame of mind. They're coming up on the five-minute mark, and it's third down and six for the Giants. and threw it low and incomplete. Fourth down. He was trying to get it out to Stacy Robinson and pressure on the receiver by Cedric Mack and David Galloway was chasing Sims. Again, David Galloway, it seems like we always call his name either making a tackle or chasing, a chasing the quarterback down. It's really played well up front for the Cardinals. The Cardinals have just scored, forced New York to punt for the fifth time today. So we said at the outset of the telecast here. They are working, talking about St. Louis. Absolutely. They're not giving anything up. And better kicking to Sikahema. Nice kick. Good coverage, too. Sikahema. Two yards. More than a few and out across the 40. Sikahema, an outstanding rookie for the Cardinals. Good special teams player. Byron Hunt made that tackle. Joe Cribbs has scored to put the 49ers on top by 12 points. 49ers trying to win their ninth game of the year. And that would really hurt Minnesota if the 49ers win this game because Washington is already one of the wild card teams. And Minnesota plays Houston later today at 4 o'clock. And next week, we have Washington and Philadelphia. And the 49ers have to play the Rams. Minnesota will have a tough opponent in New Orleans. Dallas is still in the picture, and they play Chicago. So the league loves this as we go right down to the nub. You what know, do you think? What do you think the teams are going to be, Joe? Well, you know, Washington, they're in. They've got to travel to Philadelphia. And the Philadelphia Eagles are an improving football team, and the Redskins are having trouble playing on the road. The 49ers are playing good football now, back with Joe Montana. They could not only win the division, but get that wild card. Let's see if the Cardinals can score quickly and add some drama to this one. J.T. Smith inside the 40. The ball came loose. Belongs to New York. Running back with it is Welch. New York has the ball at their own 48, and that really changes things. Instead of the Cardinals being inside the New York 40, the Giants are outside their 45. And it is Kenny Hill who is shaken up on the play. Romax going back in the pocket. Now J.T. Smith just comes around and makes a nice throw. It's a right over the linebacker said now you see that shot that Kenny Hill gave him he hurt himself he hit him so hard and it was picked up by Welsh and Kenny Hill walks off the field and J.T. Smith is the one who coughed it up now we have a discussion in the middle of the field I don't know what this is all about but the Giants are going to keep the ball. I didn't see any flag go down on the far side of the field. Neil Lomax is right in the middle of that looking for an explanation. I can't see what they're talking about. The ball was clearly free if it had to do with the reception before JT ever hit the ground. Yeah, JT caught it, that's, ran with it, was that, hit and fumbled. That's a sign of a good veteran quarterback. See Phil Sims get in there. He says, look, Lomax is in there with the officials. I got to get in here and find out what's going on and put my two cents in just in case. Four and a half left in the game. The ball does belong to the Giants. and. I think any chance of a dramatic finish faded on that one. I want to see some sagging shoulders. They belong to J.T. Smith, who walked off the field. That could have really changed this game, Joe. Well, it could. It would have gotten them down in better field position. Of course, the Giants were real tough throughout the entire ball game, but uh, you know, it would have made it a little closer. Good news for the Giants. Mark Bavaro is back in the lineup. He limped off earlier. Tackled by Noga as the Giants try to run this clock down. Well, I think they will. I, I don't think you'll see the Giants put the ball in the air. Even if they get into a third and long situation, you'll probably look for a draw. Every time you run a play, you're going to run about 45 seconds off the clock. 
you know, they've got a 13-point lead. They feel very comfortable. They're one of the best kickers, if not the best kicker in football. A lot of things going for them to win this one. Ball is to the Cardinal 48, and it's second down and six. They keep Carthon in there along with Morris. Four minutes left. That was a shot at Carl Carter, who's got a banged-up shoulder. Teeing off. Of course, the Cardinals can afford to do that now when they know that the Giants are going to run the ball. Well, not only that, it, even, even early in the ball game, we saw the Cardinals stay back a little bit, and the Giants pick up a lot of yardage. As soon as the Cardinals commit to the blitz to try and stop the run, they've been very effective. That fumble a moment ago by J.T. Smith apparently has nailed down another loss, which will be the 11th of the year for St. Louis trailing by 13. You know, the Giant fans sit here and they wait in, in hopefully not seeing one of those fumbles where the Eagles pick one up and ran it in back a few years ago. Kenny Hill sprained his ankle, but he will be back, and Phil Simms calls timeout. That's the first timeout expended here in the second half by either club. And we have three minutes and eight seconds remaining in the game. And Sims will go to the sideline to talk it over with the offensive coordinator. A while ago, we showed you the offensive unit of the Giants in 1963. How about those people on the other side of the ball? The defensive line, Jim Cat Cabbage, Andy Robustelli, Dick Moduleski, and John Lovetier. Lovatier. The linebackers were Hillebrand, Scott, and Huff, and the defensive backs, Dick Lynch, Erich Barnes, Dick Pessinen, and Jim Patton. It was 23 years ago that the Giants last won the division. That's a very comfortable seat the Giants are sitting on. That, those are heated benches. And as cool as it is outside, it's cooler inside. We have three minutes and eight seconds left in this game. Say, so didn't anybody know that a 25-year-old psychotic armed with a rifle might go berserk at any moment, go on a killing spree? Her mother knew it, tried to warn the authorities, but no one would listen. 60 Minutes tonight on CBS, and following 60 Minutes, Murder, She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury. And then the Hallmark Hall of Fame, Promise, starring James Garner, a story of two brothers. James Wood co-stars with him, and all of that is tonight on CBS, and Joe, I would... Really look forward to watching that movie on CBS Promise. They say it is terrific. Ball in midfield. Third and seven. Toss to Morris. officials, Ed Merrifield, has no flair for the dramatic. <laughs> he said it's down at the one-foot line. I don't think he hurt 76 you. 76-yard <laughs> run. Carthon blew him loose. Well, here you see Carthon go in motion. Now watch the block on Leonard Smith. He kicks him out and allows Joe Morris to cut up inside. As I talked about, the Cardinals over-pursued, and Joe Morris is exceptionally tough on AstroTurf. He just puts them pedal to the metal, and Lionel Washington comes a long way to make the tackle. They show a replay of it here, and the fans think that he was in the end zone. <laughs> and all the offensive linemen for the Giants are signaled in touchdown. And the officials say, why do you have to reshow that thing? The official was right, Joe. Yeah, but it would have been right. nice to give it to him. You can't do that. He wants uh, We have come to the two-minute warning. That official wants a postseason game. He's not going to call it a touchdown. Here's another view of it. Not a touchdown. Right. Good call. Nice call, Mr. Merrifield. You were right. <laughs> to the goal line, but not over yet. Did he get over? I haven't seen anybody signal a touchdown. I haven't seen it yet. Did you, Joe? Well, everybody in the stands did. And, yep. Yeah, it is it a down touchdown. That's the third of the day for Joe Morris. 
And it adds to the giant lead, 26 to 7. You can talk about Joe Morris's running ability, but Carthon has done a tremendous job lead blocking for him. Of course, you don't want to downplay the fact that Morris has had such a great afternoon, but Maurice Carthon has really made Joe Morris pick up a lot of yards today. Morris has scored on touchdowns one yard, two yards, and three yards. And two field goals by Allegri, who is now trying the extra point. That's good. 27 to 7 with 157 remaining in the game. The fumble by J.T. Smith set that one up going back the other way. And penalties help the Giants on to a couple of scores earlier. Next Saturday, the Green Bay Packers come to town. Now, these Giants have been working out, taking two days off and working out only on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but they'll have to get ready for a Saturday game, and it starts at 12 Eastern with the NFL Today on CBS. And then on Sunday, then a full schedule of games for you on Sunday, but later on Saturday, we have collegiate basketball. Illinois, number six, North Carolina, number five, and that's bound to be a good one. Now, the Sunday football games on CBS, it's a doubleheader day. to those in a moment but one of the games is Chicago and Dallas that's yeah. the doubleheader game Washington and Philadelphia Allegra kicking off Sikahama comes up and took it on the 20 pass out to the 35 yard line good return man by Sikahama here are those Sunday games the Redskins at Philadelphia Joe Theismann and I will be there or Tampa Bay at St. Louis. The Chicago Bears play the Cowboys in the second game of the doubleheader. And look at there. Philadelphia is going to eliminate Dallas perhaps today, leading 16 to 14. And Green Bay ahead of Tampa Bay by 14. And Cleveland's going to win the central division of the AFC. And Indianapolis is winning a game by three. They've got to be careful. And New Orleans are going to knock off Atlanta and knock them out of the playoffs. And the 49ers are winning. Omax on first down. Drops it off short to Earl Farrell. Farrell got about seven yards. Tackled by Gary Reese. This is the only time in the football game that Neil Omax can feel like he can get back in a pocket and have a little bit of time to look over the secondary. Three-man rush. He ran for a first down. And Lawrence Taylor is really smart. You know he's a smart football player. He could have tackled Lomax, but he figured, why should I do that? He's got the first down. I'll tackle him out of bounds, get a flag, let him go. That's a difference in, in, a, in a football player that takes cheap shots and one that understands how to play the game. When you're as good as Lawrence Taylor, you don't ever have to hit anybody late or unnecessarily. Hey, Joe, your own buddy Mark Mosley has a couple of field goals for Cleveland. They're way ahead now at Cincinnati. 34-3 with eight and a half minutes left. I'll tell you, Mark, uh, Mark knew he had a lot of kicking left in him, and uh, he has an opportunity now to move on into the playoffs. 127 left in this game. 127. First down, three-man rush. Lomax has it intercepted. Running back with it is Gary Reasons, and that's his second of the year. And the Cardinal turnover today is the second. With 119 left. And it looks like Bill Parcells is going to get a cold shower out there in the field before much longer. Which one of those buckets will go over his head? That's going to be the question. I think the Giants have to feel real good about what happened here this afternoon. They didn't want to just get into the division title. They wanted to feel like they earned their way there. You know, some people complain that it was ridiculous to dump that ice on Parcells. He said, I don't mind, man. It's a little fun. He said, let's have a little fun in life. It's not only fun, but it's childish. But you got to remember, there's nothing but a bunch of kids out here playing football. Tough kids. Tough kids. Real tough kids. We're going to run the clock down, and apparently 27-7 will be our final. Now the whistle blows and the Cardinals use one of their timeouts. The Giants really wanted to win today and of course again next Saturday because they're really seeking that home field advantage. They want Chicago, if they get that far, to have to come here like they had to go there last year. And of course they might get some help from Detroit. That's the game 
with Chicago at Detroit. Somebody's getting ready over there with that bucket to dump on their coach Parcells. Parcells says, Look at he said, I, I get, <laughs> he said, these guys, I get close to these guys. We're friends. He said, they never cross the line. They don't know. They know what the line is. You he's think, a little bit wary. You think he's looking over his shoulder? He's gotten rid of some of the ammunition, but they'll come up with they'll some find more. Some, they'll find something over there to dump over, man. Parcells right. has had it done enough to him that he realizes something's going on. Joe, let's you and I and all of us associated with CBS congratulate the Giants on winning their division. They're a heck of a football team. They're a good football team, and uh, I'd have to say odds on favor right now. They're the ones that look like they have the best chance to go all the way. Now another snap of the ball. And a lot. Here it comes. Look out, coach. Look out, coach. You might as well relax and enjoy it, Bill. You're going to get it, big boy. And a boy! <laughs> <laughs> he says you'll see a smile on his face. He likes it. It's fun. And the fans are to the point where they start looking. Sean Lendetta's job to keep uh, Bill Parcells occupied while Harry went around and got the bucket. You saw that Dallas went back ahead of Philadelphia, striving to stay alive in the playoff picture. And Indianapolis is going to win another game, and that will be their second of the year. Still the fewest number of wins. NFL today, post game show coming up. Scores and highlights, plenty to talk about. And Brent Musburger will sort out will sort out the playoff picture and have an update on the Dallas game. Now St. Louis uses another timeout. Here's Elvis Patterson, who started back at the left cornerback today. Carl Banks, one of the many good linebackers. Now Philadelphia goes back ahead of Dallas on a pass from Kavanaugh. Kenny Jackson. To Kenny Jackson. You know, you got to give a lot of credit to the St. Louis Cardinal defensive football team, too. They have gone out and played really, really tough. They started out with bad field position all day long, and they hung right in, and it really hasn't been their fault that the score is the way it is. Let's say hello to Gene Stallings' son back home, John. I know you've come to be a good buddy of his. He's a special kid. He sure is. He's a special young man. I know he's feeling it for his dad today, and wishes his father could win, but I guarantee you he'll be out there next Saturday at practice. And you're not going to play for Gene Stallings and not call timeouts at the end of the game to try to get a hold of the ball no matter what the score is. He, he, the term give up does not fit into his vocabulary, nor will it fit into his football team's vocabulary. I think the Cardinals are a team that have suffered through a tough season, but they're on the rise and they're building. Here comes the punt from Vendetta. This will be the sixth punt of the day by Lindetta. Sick of him is inside his corner. They got to blow the whistle because of the contact on the line. You think Parcells is cold down there? He's freezing right yeah. now. <laughs> He's rigid. The guy. Encroachment <laughs> defense. They call it against the Cardinals. Of course, Lawrence Taylor down on the bottom, as you see kneeling down. Yeah, if I were that coach, I'd take good care of number 56 because he's going to take good care of his coach. That's exactly right. You keep him close. Well, Atlanta is out of the playoff picture. It would have taken a fantastic combination of events to keep them in, but they were dumped. Plenty for Brent Musburger to talk about on the post-game show here on CBS. 108 remaining in the game. have it for the final 55 seconds of the football afternoon. Robbie Jones was downfield to make that tackle and the Giants trying to get the home field advantage have played their front line players all afternoon and very likely will do so again next Saturday against Green Bay here. Well, However, if the Bears lose to Detroit, 
That would make a difference. It would make a difference. It also is a thing where you don't want to give your players too much time off. Having the having won the division title, they're going to have two weeks to rest anyway. You want to keep your guys playing football. The last time the Giants won 13 games, you're back in the 1929-30 season. Tomax drills it out here to Roy Green, and he's trying to get out of bounds. And go. 46 seconds left in the game. That's the third catch for Roy. And the tackle by Byron Hunt. There's Godfrey, who played a good game at the right guard position. And there is the rookie nose tackle, Eric Howard, out of Washington State. And Gene Stallings. Stallings told me a little story the other day. He said, a westward movement, they hooked up the wagons. And after that, they built a railroad, and some people rode the railroad. He said, I want the guy who hooks up those wagons. I don't want anybody taking a ride. Here's the screen pass. With 40 seconds left. You hear some noise down there, don't we? And it was Johnson who popped him out of bounds. Now let's look at the NFC playoff picture. Giants have won their division. Bears have won theirs. The Rams are leading theirs with a record of 10 and 4. Rams play later today, and the Bears play on Monday at Detroit. Washington is in the playoff. The 49ers winning today. Minnesota plays at 4 o'clock. Dallas is losing. Atlanta's been eliminated. And the Cardinals have no more timeouts remaining, so they have a hurry-up offense. And you can check the clock. The 13th win for New York, the division champions. Musburger will be busy sorting out the playoff picture for you. That stops the clock with 19 seconds left. Mr. Theismann, I shall see you in Philly next week. Yes, we shall be there. Should be a good football game. The Redskins, and they've got to get their act together. If they they're really going to go do. anywhere in the playoffs, of course, they have the home game. And they also have a great punter in Steve Cox. It's, they've got to work out the combination of Jeff Bostick at center, Jay Schrader, the holder, and Max Andeas. Something there hasn't been right for them all year, and they've got to solve that problem if they want to move on into the playoffs. New England trailing. If they lose, they'll have the same record as the Jets. Cleveland is going to end up with 11 wins. And Denver has 11 wins. It's a little screen pass. Farrell running with the ball. And the Cardinals get a first down, but they can't stop the clock. And 27 to 7 is our final. Robbie Jones made the last tackle of the day. Parcells heads for Gene Stallings. These two coaches these two teams will meet a couple of times next year Stalling said you know I like all these coaches but I wish they'd do away with that handshake after the game and congratulations again to the winning Giants again over in the Meadowlands and Irv you and I were talking we think the Giants are the best team in pro football doesn't matter much they got to play on the field <laughs> well they're playing with a lot of confidence because everybody knows they have a great defense but you know how about the biggest little giant of them all oh he's huh? something Joe Moore oh, gee. Irv, Irv and Jimmy we've got everybody synced up with us now so let's take you through the scores and get you up to date I know this is redundant for some of you but bear with us here and then we'll have some highlights momentarily but the Giants with an impressive win now over the Cardinals 27 to 7 was the final score and for those of you who did not see the giant game let's take you through some of the key moments now Irv mentioned Joe Morris boy he had a two touchdown afternoon and almost scored a third time and he is so tough to bring down watch how he darts for his daylight cuts sometimes runs to the corner and Gene Stallings had very good reason to be upset over there on the Cardinal sideline and his offense didn't have any time or well here's the problem when Morris isn't carrying the ball you have these guys knocking your quarterback down Eric Howard gets a sack here now watch Joe Morris on this run all right like that you're like great cutback ability everybody knows he has that doesn't have great speed but he gets down inside the one yard line this little guy ran for over 1400 yards this year all right he was down there on the one and the Giants pounded in 27 7 giant fans know and the rest of you should know that a win over the Green Bay Packers next Saturday here on CBS Giants would have the home field for as far as they go in the playoffs the last five championships in the NFC have all been won by the team that had the home field advantage so Jimmy the Greek it's an enormous edge.
Not to go to Chicago in that George Hallis. I remember how he blocked that punt or missed the punt. Hallis came down and did it, Brent. I'm telling you. Landetta <laughs> fanned on that punt when the wind was blowing in Soldier Field. We should point out for Landetta, the last time I checked, he's a leading punter in the NFC, so he has certainly come back and overcome that problem of a year ago in Soldier Field. Now, down in Dallas, the Herschel Walker Show. But, folks, it wasn't good enough. The Eagles leading the Cowboys 23 to 21. Cowboys are already knocked out because of the performance today by the 49ers and watch here walker on a beautiful hesitation cut back and then the speed does the rest well i tell you you know he runs so easily and so smoothly everybody knows he's a world-class sprinter run all young giving it everything he has can't get him until he gets to the end zone too late now eagles were able to get ahead of matt kavanaugh and then they came back again and they chucked that one to herschel walker and here he went on his 84 yard touchdown reception that on the pass from Pelur, and Walker put two long touchdowns on the board, but it wasn't good enough because the Eagles kept coming back. Yeah, Matt Cavanaugh comes back here with a pretty good pass to Kenny Jackson, makes a great catch on it, well covered, but he comes down with it, and the Eagles right back in this ball game. All right, Nerv, so as the result of that action with those two games now final, let's check the standings. There are the Giants at 13 and 2. Now the Redskins sitting at 11 and 4, but they will have the home field advantage for the NFC wildcard game. The Dallas Cowboys at 7 and 7, that game's still up in the air. Now we're going to tell you the story of the AFC Central. What an explosion by the Cleveland Browns. We'll have that when the NFL Today post game show, sponsored by Miller Lite, continues in just a moment. <laughs> A development in the Vinnie Testaverde sweepstakes. At the scoreboard, and it'll tell you the story. And guess who won again today? That's right, Ron Meyer. Maybe we should make him the coach of the year. Two in a row, the Colts come from behind. They beat the Bills. Jim Kelly was knocked out, however. He complained of dizziness. Now, Tampa Bay, as the result of their loss today at the Packers, they move into a tie. But if those two teams are deadlocked at the end of the year, Tampa Bay has played the weaker schedule. They would get the first-round draft choice. Cleveland and Cincinnati. Here's a story that unfolded down in Cincinnati. Hard to believe that the Bengals, with all those weapons, could not score a single touchdown against the Browns. Bernie Kosar almost immediately went deep to Langhorn. It was a 66-yard gain, and this set up the Browns' first touchdown of the afternoon. Marty Schottenheimer, a former defensive assistant, you knew his defense was going to play well, but the questions surrounded Kosar. Could he win the big game? He showed again, just like he did down at Miami, that he's tough in a big game. This one to Slaughter, and it was 14-3, and the Slaughter continued. Watch him go here to Webster Slaughter for another touchdown, and they made it look very easy. The fumble was recovered for a score, 34-3. To three was the final. And so the Browns wrap up the AFC Central 11 4. Speaking of coach of the year, there's a man who deserves a lot of credit. He's a coach of the Giants. Hi, Let's go live to the Meadowlands where Bill Parcells is. Congratulations, coach. 27 to 7 was the final score, and our congratulations to Bill Parcells for winning the division, and today, Bill, winning your 13th game of the year. Well, thank you, Jack. I'll tell you, it was a struggle, and uh, you know, I, we kind of started a little bit slow. We had a chance early in the game to hit a big play, and we didn't get it done, and didn't take care of the ball real well there for a while today, but uh, our guys got a lot of pride, and they fought hard. Bill, before we go any further, thanks for being so very nice to us whenever we have visited with you before a game. Oh, well, you know, Jack, you've got to keep all the friends you can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not smiling very much. Uh, I know you have another game and a short work week with Green Bay coming in here next Saturday. Well, that's right. we got a lot more to do, and... Uh, you know, we've been kind of staying pretty steady most of the year, and that's what we're going to try to keep doing. And uh, if we can, I think, uh, you know, we can continue to play well. If we don't, you know, in football, you either get better or you get worse. What, what else do you have to do, Coach? Pardon me, Jack? What else do you have to do to get your team primed for where you're going? Well, I like to try and get a little bit more balance in our offense, you know. Uh, we got the running going a little bit today, but uh, we weren't consistent. You know, we hit a couple big plays on the running game, but we didn't... Uh, you know, we didn't establish a lot of consistency in it, not too many five- and six-yard gains. So I think we got to keep doing that because we're going to need it in the cold weather up here. And you held your breath when a couple of your players came off uh, hurt like uh, Patterson and Bavaro. Meanwhile, how did this feel, Coach, with the bucket of water? Oh, that Carson, I'll tell you. 
<laughs> I'm going to get him one of these days for that. You can't tell me it didn't make you colder than you were. No, it's cold. It's cold, that's for sure, Jack. Good luck along the way, and uh, the very best to you, Coach. Thanks, Jack. Bill Parcells and his Giants won a 27-7, their 13th victory, and back to Brent. All right, Jack, thank you very much. He'll take those showers as long as they're offered. And, uh, Jimmy the Greek, I know you think Parcells has done a great job. Did this you year. remember when they were thinking of firing him and That's we right. stuck up for him? That was, what, about three years ago? And then he finally <laughs> turned it around, defensive assistant. He replaced Ray Perkins, and uh, what a job that he has gone. All right, final seconds moments ago down in Dallas. Cowboys trailing the Philadelphia Eagles. They had time for one last desperate play, and here's how it unfolded. From from the shotgun, Pelaire going deep, and Irv Cross start the celebration in Philadelphia. Your Eagles have beaten the Cowboy. Buddy Ryan, he finally won a division game, and what a long, tough year for that man, Tom Landry. First time in 20 years they have had a losing season. And the NFL Today Post Game Show, brought to you by Miller Lite, continues in just a moment. Well, we welcome those of you who watched the Philadelphia Eagles upset the Dallas Cowboys to our post-game show. Let's take everybody up to the top of the scoreboard and again run through what has happened this afternoon. The Giants, with this win, are positioned to have the home field advantage throughout the remainder of the playoffs. If they can beat the Packers in the Meadowlands next Saturday, you'll see that action here on CBS. Here is the upset down in Dallas, and now the Cowboys are not going to have a winning season for the first time in 20 years, and they are not completely out of the playoff picture by the Eagles. Buddy Ryan's first NFC East Division team victory with his Eagles this year. Another upset. Indianapolis, you can see, is now losing that first round pick because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have lost again to the Green Bay Packers. And you can see what that does with the Cleveland Browns having wrapped up a division title today, 34-3 over the Cincinnati Bengals. It was a terribly impressive win by the Browns. They kept the Bengals out of the end zone and Bernie Kosar again improved in the clutch. Now, I was ahead of myself. Here's the story on the Indianapolis Colts, 24 to 14. The Colts are in danger of dropping out of the Vinny Testaverde sweepstakes. Meanwhile, New Orleans and Atlanta, the Falcons had a chance to score in the closing seconds, could not, and the Saints come away with a win, 14-9, the final there. San Francisco continues to drive toward the playoffs. 29-24 over the Patriots. They came from behind in this game. And Irv, let's take a look at this. And originally, well, a 49ers were stopped on fourth and goal. They went back down, and Roger Craig got in, and they were up by three, 13-10. Now, they had some extra point problems here because of a bad snap. It was not handled by the holder, so Wershing never even got an opportunity to kick it, and everybody thought, oh, boy, that is the point that is going to keep them out. Then, later, Tony Collins zipped in, and New England moved ahead 17-16. But Irving Fryer was helped off with an injury, and a very big injury as far as the Patriots are concerned. Eason had Collins there, missed him. Keena Turner picked it off for the 49ers, and Joe Cribbs took the handoff around, left in, and went on in. And Irv, how good are these 49ers? Jimmy thinks they're one of the best in the league. Well, they are one of the best in the league when they're healthy, and they're getting to the point now where they're starting to get some of their players off that injury list and going to the playoffs. Tell they're going to be off the cliff. I know, that's what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I get the picture. They're a pretty good football team. San Francisco, way to go. Now, here are the active scores that are still going on now. Miami and the Rams, and let me put this one in focus for a moment. If the Rams win, they wrap up the NFC West title, and a loss keeps the 49ers in the running for a division championship. Rams and 49ers will close out next Friday night. Vikings are hoping the Rams can beat the Niners and thus have a chance. Meanwhile, the Raiders' tailspin continues. Marcus Allen fumbled moments ago. And it was recovered, and now the Chiefs are up by 10. And, uh, Jimmy, I'll tell you, it looks as though Kansas City might close them out today. I'm afraid so, Brent. I'll tell you, their offense is not doing well, and their defense, you know, missing Hayes in that corner cost them a touchdown just now, too. All right, so Kansas City is up 10-0, and they are in the first quarter. Now, Seattle and San Diego and the Seahawks with an outside shot. They still need a combination, but they're not out of it yet. They lead the Chargers 3-0. They are in the first quarter. Now, the Minnesota-Houston game. Jerry Burns has done a great job of coaching this team, and they can get into the playoffs if they beat Houston, 
And if they beat New Orleans, and that won't be easy next week, by the way, beating the New Orleans Saints, that's a pretty tough football team. But they need the 49ers to lose in that situation. So I guess Jimmy the Greek would have to make the Niners the favorite to get the wild card. Well, they're a slight favorite. I would say about two and a half to one. All right. Well, Irv and Jimmy, you stick around. We've got more of our postgame activities for those of you who watch the Philadelphia Eagles upset the Dallas Cowboys. For the rest of you, we say goodbye for the time being. We'll see you next Saturday when it's the Green Bay Packers and the New York Giants on CBS. Thank <laughs> you.